Threads, the guy that would eat something, be like, "Ew!" But then he'll keep eating it. Like, he paid money for <laughs> it. Yeah, it's <laughs> money. I, yeah, I, 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 okay, I, I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll start, he'll start licking his lips and like, my fingers like, "Oh, why not? Why not?" <laughs> paid for the damn meal. I'm gonna eat the damn Some meal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it. That is very accurate, cool. I, I, I'm, I know. That's what I'm saying. Okay, like. I, And welcome to the Anime Is God podcast, week five of the winter 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hey, guys. Next up, we have Ku. Yo. Next up, we have Justin. Hey, everybody. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello. All right. Uh, so before we start with anything, I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who uh, leaves the comments in our videos. The, we really appreciate them. Uh, shouts to Ayush, because he left a one on the last main podcast episode. And um, I know your main one is about Orimiya. We'll get to that. But uh, uh, thanks for your comment. I uh, really appreciate it, because we, we really don't get that many comments. So it's hard to know or get feedback on anything. So um, so feel free to leave comments like in any videos you watch. We love to read them. And yeah. Oh, and yeah, it's, it's nice to sorry David. It's it's nice to actually know like what, what what we do well, what we do bad. If it's like helpful criticism, that would be awesome as yeah. well. Or um, so but, we can improve on. Yeah, and also I understand there's a long podcast too. So if you just want to like just comment like what shows you're watching this season. Feel free to do that too. Just so any any you know uh, comments are appreciated. Well, except for manga spoilers, please don't do that. We had we, we get those too. The manga drive by spoilers, so please don't do that. But anything besides yeah. that, we're good. So. As Thanks. a podcast and Thanks, also guys. streaming it live, we are well aware that it might happen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Just remember, yeah, we're mainly anime only for a lot of things. So, so thanks, guys. So, and we don't really have uh, much anime news to go through this week, so we're gonna jump right into Higurashi. Um. So, so Taylor, I'm gonna have to ask a lot of questions here because I don't know, uh, like, the, I'm just really confused about this episode because I'm assuming I'm assuming it's gonna pay off in the next episode but they just like, jump so many different like I don't know they jump through so many different things that like I just have to assume like was this like in the original like any any of this like n- none no, none of this was none of this was in the original Did I they... can't remember exactly like the details of what happened in because the... I've gone through a Higurashi to explain I've gone through a Higurashi deep dive and like <laughs> I've gone through like the, the last couple of seasons and then I've also learned a couple of things from um I I don't know if it's a game. I know for sure it's in the Higurashi manga and I think it's a game. But what we're getting confused by is I've learned that there is some information in this season that is coming from um um Umineko is oh, the name okay. of it. I know nothing about it. I've heard of it. <laughs> I didn't realize it was connected to Higurashi because I think it's the same author, but I didn't realize it was this, this... Mm-hmm. I didn't re- realize they were connected in the same universe. So that's, that's yeah. We kinda... don't we don't know for sure, but apparently there's been clues that there's a character from that that's in it, and it makes sense that that's that character. But that's all I know. I've never I don't know anything about that. So um, that's why we kind of missed some things. And also, there were some like this is a clear sequel because there are some things that changed quite drastically from the first season that don't seem drastic, like things I didn't notice before. For example. Um, the the photographer and the um, and the nurse they like th- they always were found. I didn't remember this, but they were always found like dead or missing, or like they were both always found dead eventually. But they've never been dead. I don't think this entire time. So that's something to kind of remember going forward too. I'm not gonna say why, but that is notable. And then I mentioned before the podcast, but it seems like Satoko is a looper. So those are the things that I think I can that I, or that I can share right now. But there is still a lot that's like left to be unknown. Okay. Cool. And that's really like, this episode so confused with the timing. <laughs> so, did we ever figure out where Satoko was keeping that gun hidden? <laughs> no, it's so it's really weird because like we went straight from like that last cliffhanger and then just like a year time skip and I'm assuming they're bring they're going to bring up next episode, but it's really weird uh, like format-wise. Like it's just mm-hmm. Yeah, so I noticed that they just either they put that arc on hold or that's that arc is completely done because it was a completely different uh universe this time it's like the, the the subtitle it was like it was like um like vanishing village like satoko kenshin or whatever or kishin 
Yeah, so I, I believe we touched based on it before, but it looks like this is the origin of this universe as to why um, Rika keeps looping. And this is the universe where everything ended up like like there was a happy ending and then the village curse is now gone in a sense. And it looks like it wasn't uh, supernatural, but rather it was a virus, right? They, and uh, the only was a Rika, virus, but then like they at the very beginning though they showed Hanyu as like a regular person, or maybe like that's like her her physical form. So I don't know if they're mm-hmm. explaining that what she has to do, or how like or something about Oyashiro. So, like I don't know. They mentioned how like like the curse isn't. I don't know. It's weird because they said the curse wasn't real, but then they said like Oyashiro was sad right. about like the dam, like like uh making all these like uh these like factions fighting each other in the village so i don't know where they're going mm-hmm. in that direction no but again uh now that the now that it has been confirmed that the curse is going away or that uh like the the gods have have, have calmed down from their anger um that's where rika came in and talked to the other elders or the head of the household to say hey let's put out public that this is no longer a thing you know the the civil war is 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 done right and let's move on for our lives and this is opening up the path to where rika actually left the village um and it was mentioned maybe five or six episodes ago that that's why this loop was continued is because she left the village after happy ending and someone was wanted her to come back which in this case is satoko so i'm assuming this is going to be an answer arc as to how it all began okay was it revealed um in the original that like did he show us that Rika did leave the village and wanted to like set up that exam that entrance exam and go to that one school? Or is that all new information? It's all new information. Okay. Or yeah. I guess it could be in that one Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that that new arc that we didn't know about in the game or mm-hmm. visual novel or whatever. Okay, then I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to say. So no, I'm, I'm, this episode is so confusing. Then, yeah. So basically, have to wait till next week, and hopefully, don't answer it. But mm-hmm. I have to admit that I'm a little bit frustrated because this does feel kind of like a bait and switch. Like this was originally marketed as something that was accessible for completely new viewers, and I don't. I 100 don't think and that's then, true. Like, I don't even think that what? this is good for people like me because, like, there is. <laughs> it's a very strong chance that this is heavily influenced by Umineko. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I just heard a bunch of people saying it. I haven't read the sure word. It's so. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, there's, okay. a, there's a full title, but most people know it's Umineko. I think there's a subtitle mm-hmm. too. I mean, to and, be um, fair, until the season finish, it could be something that you can watch yeah. without needing previous knowledge. I'm just thinking too, like just all like the different arcs we had of like, what was the point of all this? Like, I don't know. What did what did going through like like Reina's arc and then Mion's arc? Like, what was what was the whole point of doing that? Like, it's just because everyone just died in the end anyways, and everyone reset it. So I didn't, I didn't get, like, what what we learned from all those arcs? Uh, again, I think we need to finish the season off before we figure out the importance yeah. of them. Honestly, okay, I think that we went through those arcs because there were some key differences from the original. Things that okay. I just couldn't, the things that were so small that I didn't pick up on them unless I rewatched the thing. But they are really small things. And mm. I think that they were there as, like, Easter eggs for people to try to figure out what's happening. Whereas like, I don't think that you guys would have been able to even have a chance because you wouldn't even know the details that have changed to look for, you know? Right. So, I mean, Yeah. And then maybe the flashbacks were a key factor that we just don't know the importance of yet. Right. So I'm sure we'll get our answer. I guess. Within the yeah. Next few That's just what I'm thinking right now, just while we're waiting for the season end. But yeah. And then, uh, and then to be fair, as, as a new viewer to the Higurashi series, I actually enjoyed the first, 12 or however many episodes that that we've come along before this arc or the arc before i've actually enjoyed it as a newcomer so maybe that's the the selling point of like the arcs before and then now they're like okay guys we got to take up the training wheels we got to show them the true horror of higarashi and what the show has to offer and now we're just gonna dive deeper into the story i guess uh well i'm really glad that you enjoyed it because that was my biggest concern is that it just wouldn't be quite as enjoyable mm -hmm. but like like the way that they do have it set up for timing and pacing, um, right. so I'm just glad that you enjoyed it. Well, okay, I do agree with Kuda. Like I did enjoy the first half too, but I think when it gets to this part where we have to, it's now it's going back to, or it's you have to like know and fresh from the original or even Umineko. That's when it's just mm-hmm. like that's what I'm starting to get a little worried that like 
yeah, that, like new people mm-hmm. like are just <laughs> gotta get like screwed not knowing this this info. So, and then uh, also to be fair, like like I mentioned a tale earlier, like I'm okay with gore and violence or whatever, but when you do it to to kids in a sense, right? It it is kind of a turn off to some people. So maybe that's why they had to kind of make it more uh, viewer friendly in a sense. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. know I feel like people who like do this. I feel like the writers who usually come with this kind of stuff don't worry about that kind of thing. Like I think they know what you're getting into, so I don't you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm I can't. Sure that's I, don't know, I can't see like, right, like, I can't see, like the studio or, or whatever t- t- toning it down just for that. But yeah, I suppose. And then I guess it gives us a time or a chance to kind of play detective to figure out how it's going to end. I don't know if the other Higurashis were kind of like that too, where they give you a little bit and then with like the the clues that you've been giving. All right, mm-hmm. here's the second half. Right, can you solve mm-hmm. the mystery of what's going on? Yep, so they did. Okay, yeah. So maybe it's just like that, right? We got the bits and pieces. Now we need to figure out what's going on. So, mm-hmm. and then That's to be exactly fair, right. I did I did figure out a few things. Um, mm-hmm. So <laughs> you did. They, they they did they do give you enough if you kind of like just pick at pieces here and there to kind of figure out what's going on and who's the main culprit and whatnot. So, I think, yeah, you know, I think it's a pretty good show, and they give you just enough to kind of figure things out if you want to like just just look into things and assume things, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I really have no complaints. And if we if we were just a little more patient, I think it'll all pay off in the end. Like I have hopes for it. I think so too. I think at the very least, everything is going to be fully explained by the end. Yeah, mm. I'm so. still yeah, I'm I'm still like optimistic about the ending. It's just like this episode just frustrated me, just because like mm. the feeling of like like I guess I guess I have to, I guess it's the payoff part, but mm. it's just frustrating that oh. like we didn't get like any any like um any connections between last week's episode to this one and then we have to wait another week for it but i think like oh okay by the end like it probably won't be as bad so dude my biggest gripe about this episode was the fact that apparently Xion is not canon because she wasn't part of this universe in a sense but hanyu was in here like what the hell how do you bring hanyu and not Xion? i mean wait did they say that or is this because she wasn't show- showing up in like the the scene of everyone I feel like if she's not with the group during the uh, like the revelation of the killer or the virus or whatever, then I'm pretty sure that she's not part of that world in a sense. I'm pretty sure. I think she is. It's just that it's depending on whether or not she hangs up with the group or not. I think it's either she's with she's either somewhere else or she's with like the group. Yeah, I agree um, with David on that one. I don't know because if you remember, they talked about me on uh, graduating from middle school when going on to high school in the city. But they had no mentions of Xion whatsoever. Yeah, but I in think... previous, but in previous arcs, uh, Xion did go to school and she was part of the the class as well. Okay. They didn't explain then, that, but I don't think they're just like just straight up like right off, uh, Xion as like just not existing in the universe, unless mm-hmm. she died or something. I don't know. No, I because thought of Xion is being more of a character who's just like there to help t- tell the story sometimes. And if she's not necessary for that particular arc, she kind of just goes away. <laughs> That's kind of how I've always viewed Xion. <laughs> uh, I guess. But the thing that always throws me off is how they always introduce her in the world, in a sense. Because the very right. first time she was introduced, like none of the other kids knew that Xion was like a, like a person, that she had a twin sister. And then like further, like further on in the season, either she was there or she just wasn't. I think and it was, even, I think, I think it was maybe Keiichi didn't know. I don't know if the other kids didn't know. All they... The other kids didn't know. Rena, Rena said uh, something about it okay. too. Yeah, and then there was that one episode where uh, Rico was about to give up and commit suicide. She even asked for Shion. So whether or not Shion was like show on camera or not, uh, she is acknowledged whether to be there or not if she was part of that universe. I feel. So I feel like she's one of those like, uh, what's that word? She's one of those characters that pops in and out of the universe. And she's not canon. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but mm-hmm. yeah, that, that was my take on it. Like it was weird. <laughs> we'll see. Could be like a red herring, I guess. It could, it, there could be something. I don't know. Sure, a red herring. Yes. <laughs> I need, I need to look at what that means, but. <laughs> oh, most, I, I, most I, definitely. I, 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 means I, I thought that was maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's what you're trying to go with with that character, but. Oh no! I'll. I'll See, I knew I, I had a word in mind, but it just it just left me for some reason. I made it angry and just left my head. So I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't figure, out, figure out the word. 
Um, but yeah, no, I think that's all I had for this week's yeah, episode. Yeah, I, I don't have much else to say because can't really say much about this week's episode. So mm-hmm. we'll end it there for Hiroshi and see what happens for next week. We'll move on next to ReZero. Ooh! Yeah. Yeah. Big show. <laughs> I still need to keep up with a lot of things, but um, we finally got the, the Beatrice uh, connection with like Ketna. And mm-hmm. I guess like, because it fits in the sanctuary, even though they didn't really reveal how Amelia, like, Amelia got to, if Amelia has anything to do with the sanctuary or not, but that, that was one part that was important. I guess we we knew that from, like, um the, from Yuzu, they were telling, they, they're telling Suru and all of them, so I guess we'll hear from them later. But then the big one is um basically uh, Cornelius and the whole, like, uh was it Beetlejuice? Like, and him, how he Juice. became... Just juice, juice. Well, juice. juice. Yeah. Well, he became, <laughs> yes. he became Beetlejuice after he took that witch factor. Nah, it's okay. We, we've, I've given him back respect. I never thought of like this man. He is now mad respect, bro. <laughs> He's oh the homie, man. <laughs> I mean, so technically, like everything we've seen from before was like was the sloth witch factor like controlling him, and then this is like his original yep. form. So I was so so Strad, you can give you can give props to the original guy, not the, the sloth <laughs> controlling. Okay, him, but, so. my bad. But. But he knew the consequences of it, though, like what, he, what what was going to happen. So I still respect him. <laughs> did he? It seemed to me like he didn't really know the full consequences of what was going to happen. Mm. No, he, 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 he didn't, didn't know. know. He definitely no, no. did it. He, def- he, did, he didn't know what was going to happen, but he was willing to take the risk to protect. Yeah, he Oceana. knew that once he opened up that witch factor, there was no turning back. Yeah, so, But to protect Fortuna and, and Amelia, he had to do. It would be, he had to do the do. I, I, like this has been like my favorite part of the show, actually. It, it, it's I don't know. Yeah. It's like it, by even like going into like the first season stuff. Like I think like this is like the most interesting part for me. I I don't really I, I couldn't really even tell you why, but it's just I don't know. Oh, for me, it's because this is, this is about the lore. This is like ran relating that to and like no brew. like relating to like a lot of the witches and like I I don't know. I guess like they mentioned the church too. I don't know if it's like related to to the witch or it's like something separate and then we have the new character pandora like when oh, she was yeah. first revealed i'm tired of like op god like godly lo- lolis like get them <laughs> like, there's so many of them god hey man sign me up that time and space <laughs> technique that she did to uh oh regulus i was like oh yeah that's I, nice <laughs> I, I hate that guy too <laughs> because annoying as well like it's more just villain i mean than he's the archbishop of greed for a reason all he cares about is himself I, and his own agenda so yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> oh god so but but guys guys big can i just say big rip to ren because i don't think she's gonna revive I, 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 I kept saying this whole time yeah, we're not we're not they going they anywhere new, to we only a few yeah. more seasons to get back to ren yeah, now on, with all I mean, these what, things like, what are you guys doing bro like, come on <laughs> if you think bring, of it, I'm, I'm okay with it i'm okay with like, it now. if you think of it cool like we're still basically we're, like oh, just about where we started at the beginning of the season not even, not even the second part i'm talking about the first part of the second season yeah we're still here and it's God. just insane. So, see, for me, it's like that's why I'm saying. I think that's why like, I was the only one that enjoyed like season two so far, or the most of, because I really enjoy like exploring like the lore and just a lot of the like just more of the. Revel- I feel like we're just getting more revelations, really. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with just like this pace and just knowing more. I mean, so, yeah, it would also be fun. It's, it's to... just, that, just that part one just had a lot of cliffhangers that. Like that just led to no- nothing. So that part was annoying, but overall, I still really enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was cute too when uh, Ryuzu was talking about the uh, the backstory of Beatrice and how oh, yeah. Echidna would bring oh, yeah. Beatrice to the sanctuary, and, and Beatrice would you know act like he wasn't interested, and then they had like the cute scenes. He's like, "Oh, I guess I'll help you with the laundry." Like, and then she's like, "Oh, well, can you carry some of it?" And she's like, "Okay," and she you know grabs the hand. And she's like, "I'll take half." Like that's it, nothing more, nothing less. So. I enjoyed that that oh, back yeah. part, we, even though we did see Roswell too, or like or apparently like his, a young version. Yeah, was it young? Yeah. He, he said like he looks the same. It, it, it said like um that family's like version of Roswell. So was it like? I'm pretty sure it's. I'm pretty I, sure it's Roswell. I, yeah, it? I'm okay. pretty sure it's Roswell because they called him you know Mathers, and he's like, oh please call me Roswell. Like okay. I hate being called by oh, my yeah, family so, name okay, or so whatever. Roswell, yeah. So we saw Roswell. I guess before like he, like, I wonder if that was before he was into. I think he yeah, he didn't know anything about like, Kidna back. Before yeah, then. I think they were just like going to meet, so, so that's probably how they so get involved. He got, he got involved like a Ketna and like the the, the like which agree and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still um, gonna I'm still gonna say that Beatrice is gonna make a pact with somebody though. I I, I still like I feel like it's still gonna be some like a Subaru or someone. Yeah. 
Like it's got to, she's got to be, or maybe Amelia. Like if Puck is gone, I'm, like I'm Beatrice see, could make I'm, a pack with Amelia. Yeah, I'm thinking Amelia. I don't know. I don't know how it'd be with Subaru. Was, I just don't know. Like if like I don't know either. Like there's I don't something know, like, like how like the spirit stuff works. Like if you have to be a spirit user to be a contract, or she, or you just have to like I don't know, be strong enough, or you just need just a contract. Yeah, or anything. they haven't so, given us enough of that. So of that, I'm assuming so. it's yeah. Amelia, but we'll see. Yeah, there, there, there yeah. was a point in the first half of the second season where like they, I, it must have maybe it was just like poorly placed and i just connected it together uh with uh, i think it was when beatrice was like fighting with subaru where she died from uh the assassins or, uh, yeah that assassin chick um mm -hmm. where i thought it was like somewhere around there where i thought oh damn he's gonna make a pack with her and then they kind of just dropped that and then we're here doing this yeah now so i mean definitely with all these events once they do yeah. get back to subaru saving the mansion and stuff i'm yeah. sure that'll now all play out differently like, and we'll kind of see there's so many things that have to play out differently. Like they, right. there's so many different. Like basically, it's like a, it's a gigantic tree now with a, just a bunch of different branches that are kind of happening. And then, but yeah, I, I really, I really, I'm really enjoying about this, about Rezero though. So yeah, same. I, I am too. I'm really as much as Ku's displeasure of Rem just taking the backseat for maybe a season or two. Who knows? That's okay. got a lot uh, of shit Koo. to compile. Koo, maybe next three or four. <laughs> yeah, next I mean. I've heard there's a lot of content still to get through, so... <laughs> oh, next, week, uh, next week, I'll move my chair that's over there and bring in uh, a, uh, my, my my pillow and just kind of have... <laughs> bring in Rem so you can hang out, yeah. Oh, my God. Have a little satisfaction. Never, never forget. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember, right, in one of our previous weeks, did anyone theorize if Fortuna was Puck? Because I noticed oh, in yeah. this episode that uh, Fortuna called M Amelia Leah, and I think Puck is the only other character... That's called Amelia Leah. I think no, we I talked about it, but but I don't know if we came to a I don't know a hard know. conclusion. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I just feel like it's just. I, like, I still uh, don't know if that's going to be the case, but I couldn't help but pick I, up on it. Like this episode now, where it's like I think the it's mannerisms just, and stuff. I think it's just like just a nickname, just like. Yeah, if you watch like, the movie, if you watch the movie, um, Justin, I think you'll change your mind. That's still going to get more. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I no, I think. I think Fortuna still might be Puck though because of what she said to Amelia before letting um what was his name? Ares? Arif? Like that guy? The guy Archie? Yeah. Archie, yeah, Archie. Before letting Archie take her into the forest to run away. Um what she said to Amelia as her parting words was kind of this I don't know if it was word for word, but it was basically the same thing that Puck said to Amelia before yeah. uh Puck disappeared as well. So I'm really sure that I'm fairly certain that Fortuna is Puck in some spirited form. Or yeah, okay. the definitely only seems like it's, it's potentially a family member in some ways. The only reason why I'm thinking it's right. not is because I I swear I thought I remember I heard Beatrice called Puck like her older brother or like he called her in like Anarchy or whatever. So I thought yeah. I, I thought she said okay. that before. So I thought like he's either like a, you know a spirit that's all it's always been a spirit or someone someone else not well, fortuna so another thing i think with that could be with amelia is because like there's so many of those shots that when she's when uh she's like a little kid where there's a bunch of spirits around her mm -hmm. like there could have we're, we're, we're yeah. only seeing the lesser spirits but there's always a chance that like other spirits are watching or yeah, basically that's around. What I'm thinking too it's like he's related yeah. to the, the spirits that were watching uh okay. amelia we also could have be. no idea what's behind that door yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean Seems like next week we're gonna we're gonna find out if Pandora can <laughs> convince Amelia to, to just open it, open yeah. the box. Do you know, know what Pandora okay. is? Like, nope. what is Pandora? Nope. We just know okay. she's the witch of vanity. Apart from that, we don't know anything else. Oh, okay, I missed that. They so said, that I mean, okay, they, they said witch of vanity. I didn't know that was like, yeah. actually like they did the, the witch of what like vanity, vanity. Okay, but like that's not the last sin, is it? So. Not that I know. Of. Like, yeah. I know, so I don't know. I don't know what, if that was meant to be like an actual like witch, like she's an actual witch, or are they like it was just a. Saint That's a good point. Now what? that you, yeah, that you bring they, that they up. All the I didn't think about that. I can't know. It's like tea party. What did they show? Oh, all yeah. the Well, sins. no, I mean that's 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 true, but you can still have other witches, right? Because Amelia is also kind of known as the Witch of Ice. Is she? I didn't. Yeah. I don't remember. Could you ever know? Huh? Try and Google because I'm probably gonna spoil myself, but no, but no, but that's what that's what she declared herself as when she met Echidna for the first time, I think. Like, that's, but that's, yeah, she's okay. basically somebody, she's also a witch. Right. I feel like that's, I don't know, yeah, but like, uh, again, I'm sure there could be more than just seven witches, right? Maybe they're not like a great witch or like popular witch, I mean, right? To David's point, it might not be one of the like seven deadly there's sin some, level like, witches, true. but now there's like there's sub witches, it's just like below them. it's not like yeah. actual life. I mean, right. 
I'm yeah. going to say, though, if, if Pandora is a damn sub witch, her ability seems pretty OP. I, I don't think she's a sub witch, though. I think she might be like the, the like god a of witches. Them, yeah, I, right? I feel like she's, uh, the, new, like she's yeah. the new, like the new villain in the universe now because. Yeah. Because we were, be. were in the dark about the witches for so long. Now we, we got to see them more, and they're they're more like just like people, not like villains. Right. So. True. I don't know, True. you know, like, I can't think of any other villain besides like. People who whoever runs like the witches cult or maybe maybe it's Pandora maybe the real something like she has a power of something I don't know yeah and then maybe maybe I'm just like grasping at straws here but she did uh, appoint uh, uh, Juice as a factor of the sloth so if she has the power to do that and she has the power to kind of defeat an archbishop of like one of the other sins right greed mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure she's like a step above them and she's she probably like more than head, one, i think yeah like well, she's either yeah. the head witch or something of that nature because when we she, still don't know the the structure of the church yet when she did that i think it was more like an acknowledgement rather than just like she actually like a point like that's what i thought too giving yeah. him power yeah. or anything it is more like acknowledging it, his it power like regular was really pissed off that she did that and that's why right. like he he decided to try and kill her and like vaporize her mm -hmm. and then she was like oh that's cute and just, you know, did, like, time manipulation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then just sent uh, Regulus off to his own grave. <laughs> you mean this his Shogun... harem? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this show could really benefit from some, like, infographics. You know what I mean? Like, how right. Attack yeah. on Titan. Like, I, I definitely need those, yeah, those charts and lore. That would be lore really snippets. helpful. Because mm -hmm. on Attack on Titan, I paused and read all of those when I was watching it. I, I think they're very Same. useful. Same. Um... But I think it's also the only too, uh, oh yeah go ahead i was gonna say it's interesting too how like a lot of the people we see like the the villains like like juice and like and regulus uh, like they're people that amelia hasn't seen but like we thought Subaru and like everyone else has seen so like so there's gonna be like, a lot of bridging between the two and especially yeah and then we and then when we and then like how like oh, we saw beatrice too we'll have to bridge that with amelia because amelia probably doesn't know either so yeah hmm but uh definitely but for the, the puck part if uh, you you said you never watched a movie nope okay yeah i think you would change your mind oh really yeah, about, okay. yeah. yeah definitely do that as well um yeah the only other thing that i remember remembered randomly in terms of like connections and stuff is i think in season one when amelia gets told that like they killed one of the like fingers or whatever she's crying when that happens and now that makes a lot more sense now that we know like Amelia as a young girl had such a like close connection with Juice. Mm. So but I was she, like, oh damn. Did she ever meet him like in like in, and and when we see him I in season so. one? Yeah. I don't think so. I think it was only But the fact that, that like saw. not that we saw at least. Yeah. Uh, no. But I think that is potentially a time like subconsciously in her memories she remembers like who okay. that person is. Yeah. So Again, this is a show. I love the lore, lore dumps, but there's so many small things that I know I'll have to go back and like research you know and stuff. But you know, uh, I'll say my thing too is like it's still weird how like because Cornelius is he says he's like a disciple of the Witch of Greed, so it's weird how like Amelia is still not questioning like, kind of about all this. Like, what's like her role in? I guess maybe maybe we'll read that next yeah. time. But like, because I think there's gonna be a connection in the sanctuary too. Like, whatever happened. Or what, like, Ryuzu says about the Sanctuary, because Sanctuary is definitely connected to, to Eketna, so maybe that's mm -hmm. when Amelia, like, well, I think maybe after at the trial ends, maybe she'll start questioning Eketna, like, what her role in all this, and and how, like, and maybe get pissed too, how, like, she can basically, like, like cause a lot of traumatic stuff in her childhood because of her, her, well, her experience with like, the disciples. No, to be fair, he did say specifically that it was because of Pandora willed it, that that's why he's there. So it wasn't anything that Echidna did herself. It was because of Pandora well, also, and, a, and the church. I also think like Amelia mm. like knows Echidna and, and like to some certain extent because like even like when uh, she like went, like jumped into like the, the, the with the trial and Echidna was there, like it didn't really seem like Amelia was shocked or anything. It was just kind of like almost like a normal conversation, right? But I, yeah, I, I, we'll I have see. no idea. Yeah. It could also have been because it was like the end. That's of like the, that's like the one thing I'm really hung up on. It's just the connection between Amelia and Echidna. I want to know like their interactions later. So. That's what, yeah, I'm, hopefully. that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm enjoying the show now. <laughs> no, that's that's good. Good. Whatever. Yeah, I've no. always been enjoying the show. We did it. <laughs> so. right. yeah. now, that, now that Strat likes the show, I hate the show now. All right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're on those people, huh? <laughs> One of those guys. It's too mainstream. It's bro. black and it's black and white. Black well, and white. No in between. Like, <laughs> like things feel like they're getting done, but at the same time, it just feels like we're still where I, we were 
I'm forever really hoping ago. like they well, I don't know how long it's gonna take for season three to be announced. It felt like season two took forever to get announced. So. Yeah. <laughs> true, and true. It, oh. I, remember, I think I remember like while I was waiting for season two, I felt like I remember people reading there was like so much things after the sanctuary that happened too. So so I'll hopefully get to that that part. Yeah. 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 Time will tell. <laughs> I think that's it for me so yeah. we've yep. gotten a lot through <laughs> so very exciting episode uh move on next to uh dr stone man this guy's already creating uh vehicles do i we got the car baby called it a car that's why i want it <laughs> even though i mean they didn't go much detail but fuck I, I don't know that more more of the science stuff i still love so it was really really cool seeing uh like a lot of the car mechanics even though it was being like like sped through but Dude, yeah, here's how they made them. I mean, beeswax, like a and like, <laughs> oh, cause, no, because the bee was it was made as a mold. Oh. So yeah. well, yeah, that's what I meant. But even still, like watching that stuff was crazy. That's crazy, yeah. It, it yeah. was uh... even though they they try to make it all epic, but you know, in reality, like a steam engine is really inefficient. So that thing's going super. It's gotta go super slow. Like the only thing it's good for is like, it's gotta carry all the heavy stuff, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I still thought it was. Just... You know, awesome. Also, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I love the, you know, comedic parts that they bring into it. Like when they're going to get the beeswax in the first place, like they showed Gen, Chrome, and I think Magma, like all stunned yeah. by bees. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, <laughs> right. I'll just say um, real quick too about like, um, like again, about the steam engines is that um, also because they're inefficient, that's also why like uh, railroads or like trains and railroads came first is because like, because it was too inefficient to have it in a car form until you got gasoline. So you have to make them big, but then when they were super big, they're super heavy. So I made them even bigger. So then, like that's where, and then the earlier prototypes of cars is basically it was like it was just basically boilers. Like you basically put a huge boiler in the trunk and you just just bur- burning coal and you went like two miles mm-hmm. an hour. But it was like you know, yeah, it was, it was revolutionary because there's no horses pulling it. That was the other like small. If I had to nitpick, like when they built like their version of the steam vehicle, that thing was puny. It's like, how are you gonna? What are you gonna take like three hundred trips back and forth? To, like yeah. they made it seem like you know they're packing up all their gear and they're gonna take it in one go with this new, new automobile. But dude, all, all they have to do is show um, uh, his followers basically what they have. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Show them, also the car, to show them the car be like okay i'm in <laughs> yeah and also props to uh chrome as well for um man of steel man he, or oh, nerve oh, yeah. Steel. yeah he, he was all. a badass yeah. this yeah. episode <laughs> and interesting too for like, ukyo like seeing how i guess he's like one of the people who um he, i guess he's just following Takasa just because he's nothing else to do but when he sees like oh, yeah. he sees as an opportunity i think he probably doesn't agree with Sakasa. so yeah well I've- I feel like with his backstory of like how he was a submarine like uh like sonar Warner. person, yeah. he course, has that like connection to technology. So it is kind of interesting right. of like, okay, why is he with Sukasa? Which, and it's just like it kind of rolled out that way. I mean, like, yeah. again, like I mean, I shouldn't complain because I've sent Kuba again. You know, a high schooler operating a nuclear submarine is totally a thing. Yeah, but... I kind of wondered about that too. I was like, uh, but whatever. Wait, is the guy a high schooler though? Do we know this? They're all high schoolers. Like, or... What the fuck? That's why. Are I... we sure? I mean, the, they're, they're all they're all of like a younger age, right? They're, they're, like, that's, why, whole, that's why that's why Tukasa well, like, like they, we, that's that's why Tukasa like he's he made a point of, like only reviving like like, like not anyone the, that's not, not an adult. I mean, right. He distrusts he distrusts adults. I mean, I guess, but it's also like very hard to believe that this man works for like basically like, within like the submarine stuff. Well, that's what and I'm saying. Archer, that's, well. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that was to David's point. But yeah. we have Seiku, so it's whatever. I'm here for the science. Like I'm a that's like that's the point where I have to put my. Suspension of disbelief, just so I can enjoy the show. That's where yeah. It's, that's, Our, that, that, that's the way it gets to show them part. That. Part of me thought we were gonna get the tank that they show in the opening <laughs> oh, instead of the, yeah. the automobile. When they were like talking about a vehicle, I was like, "Oh, baby, the tank, tank. is coming." Yeah. Oh, it and it's like though, because they, they never really built the. Vehicle. Oh yeah, they could yeah build around it into like a tank. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the tank so, feels yeah. like it's not really going towards like how they're saying they're preventing death. It sounds yeah, like, <laughs> very like, true. Yeah. But it could also so maybe it could be like a Trojan horse where it like isn't an actually functioning tank, but when they show like up to Sukasa and everything, they might be like, "Oh, the bluff. fuck is this?" Yeah, right. Dangerous so, bluff. I mean, yeah, it's just like the show is just it's just fun to watch. That's like why I'm still enjoying yeah. it. Like, like the science part and just even like, and I'm so worried about like like you know the war like going from the science, but still it's super exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, even like an introductory like of a possible like either backstab or like a third party in a sense where, mm-hmm. he, like where they kind of mention like the people are following it just because there's no other option, 
So it's always just kind of like when they actually know like Senku and the science and everything comes in and there there is that option right there. Like it, what's gonna happen? It makes it makes the plan much more like like doable. Like when you see yeah. when you see like like Nikki and you see like like Equal like not like not like throwing like like you know Crow on the bus. It's like okay, this actually could work. There's probably is a faction of people who don't really like want to follow Tsukasa or don't believe them. They they rather like they want to go back to the, the science. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't blame them. Yeah, also, I'm kind of tired of like, just how ridiculous Tsukasa is. But this guy's just ripping trees from the from uh, from the roots and throwing again, them. The, 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 God. The, again, the, yeah, the, 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 the shonen tropes. I need to like dis- spend my just leave just to I, enjoy. I know, I know it doesn't make this <laughs> so serious, well, it, but goddamn, seriously, like, it's like a guy having super hearing. It becomes an archer, you know. It's like yeah, yeah I yeah. know it's a bunch of ridiculous stuff, like, but it's still a lot of fun. So, just uh, just enjoy it, friend. That's enjoy. I do. Yeah, right. Oh, the minute you start right. to nitpick, that's when it just yeah. goes downhill. See, well, I just don't, I've never liked Sukasa as a villain though. Like even from the beginning, I thought like he's just a terrible villain. Well, like, I, hopefully maybe like they do something with him after this Stone Wars arc, and then we move him. on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. it makes yeah. me think of like Aizen from Bleach, kind of similar. Oh, it's God. like oh, super smart, like whatever, and it's like Aizen okay. was terrible too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still just like hoping though, like at some point, like it, it's like in this arc where there he's just about to turn him and then he like dies saving them or something because I can't see him being good at all. And I also mm-hmm. would prefer to him for him not to get away and then have to build up like I mean, it's just like, like it's just like he's just had an extreme view, like, like his keeps saying how, like, you know, he, like, like he's, he says to you, he doesn't, not that he hates science, but he doesn't want it to like go too far, with, like. Yeah, I mean, he tied to like, yeah, blood and war, exactly. And so he's just like, like, science was tainted by like, you know, the adults. But it's like, the way he's doing is like, he's going the same path. So, (laughs) like, yeah, it's going to evolve to that at some point with science or not. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. they even touched on like how they made like spears and other things. It's like they still use science, like, and you know, and and the whole like war, too. (laughs) It's like, if you're trying to crush like the science, it's like you're basically doing the same thing that you like, you condemn. So, yeah, fantastic. So, luckily for Stratton, this this show has very simple politics in it, so you don't have to worry yeah, about yeah, getting yeah, over more complicated. I could take this because they're also mixing with action and also just like uh, just also, like it's just learning how to. I guess they're still like, doing all like I have to say, and at the end of the science. They're doing a really good job of not bogging you down with, like the details and not not like going into specific things. It just makes you excited for like real real world stuff. So yeah, it's and, and good job by Chrome by basically just showing them that all, all they can do is just change the color of fire. <laughs> Good job, I got colorful fire. Hey, and he's like, oh damn it, I should have told them about the ramen. He's trying I was his like, best, oh, right. damn it. I mean, he's at a disadvantage yep. too because these are all people who are revived, so they know like more science than he does, basically. Well, I took it as like when he just said, Oh, we could change like the color of flames. I just thought I just took it as like, man, this like it's just making it look like they're like nowhere near. Like Sukasa basically has like the giant advantage advantage over them right well, now. He's still not, right. he's not he's still not underestimating Senku though. He knows like well, yeah. his potential. That's, yeah. So. Yeah. That's also like one thing I've always hated where it's like like somehow like like they like know like everything that's gonna be kind of like happening with Senku when it's just like dude you apparently this guy's like a super genius and also can just tear out, tear trees out from the you know from the not like it's, damn right I mean from the ground. It's, it's damn right normal stuff. Yes, exactly. I mean I was like, it's not super genius to know like what Senku's coming coming up with. It's just like you know like how smart it is, so you, you can have a feel for Yeah, but it's it's just again I don't know why I'm trying to like believe things with that Tsukasa does. I mean this guy fights lions. So. I mean, that, that too, yes. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> all in all <laughs> Doctor Stone, great show. I good balance. Yeah. Yeah. Don't read too much into it. Yeah, and you'll have fun. They'll be like, they'll be like Seren, just, just. <laughs> okay, the thing is, like, I'm basically kind of like reading these things, but I'm not taking like my own opinion serious. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, okay. I feel like Which, I'm still like out of the way of giving this show a ten or nine. I mean, for me, it's like, <laughs> like, I mean, I enjoy it as a fan, but I do have to like, like, if I have to rate it, I do have to be critical and saying there is like a lot of like the stuff you have to just spend yeah, cool. yeah. so. All right, all right, guys. If you want to enjoy the show, don't be like David or Seren. All right, you guys will no. love this show. No. Just, no, I, just, just take it. <laughs> Just no, enjoy because, it. No, because the show doesn't take itself that serious. So, I, right. which is awesome because it makes yeah. kind of fun of it. It make like it has like those like those jokes, those comedy moments. Mm-hmm. So it's so it's more of like at the same time, it's just like oh, Sukasa throwing trees, fighting lions. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, no, no, they're not taking it that the, serious. The show's fun. I hope that like this inspires some other show to actually take a science like show seriously and do like more science stuff. So yeah. I just feel okay. like it's uh... like stuck in the shonen trap, shonen jump. Yeah. yeah. Do you, any of you know this? Like, is the show still ongoing? Right? Or the manga? I'm yeah. pretty sure it's ongoing, yeah, because it's, okay. it's not that old, and I think I would have known. Yeah, I didn't the, think so. 
I think it was the okay. announcement that ended because like how like. No, yeah, definitely. I was like, just kind of curious, like where they'll go, because I imagine like this Stone War isn't going to be like the whole I don't think it's gonna be like, thing. Out. No, no, yeah, this so. is only eleven episodes, so I'm assuming this is going to be the whole Stone. This War. is going to wrap it up, and then I now we'll get to whatever greater yeah. evil is in the world. Yeah, that's basically what I think, because they still have to figure out, like you know, who, what, who, or what caused everything to turn to Which, stone. I mean, uh, yeah, I wonder if they'll try to go to like a different like country. Maybe I feel like Japan's still big oh. enough that like oh well, yeah this yeah I don't think that'll be fine but um I've again like we're all I think we're all assuming that, like someone tried to like cure cancer or some other disease and they accidentally turned everyone into stone or because like there's like a healing effect when you like turn into stone and come out David this is a shonen show you know there's a dark meaning you know it's not gonna be like somebody was trying to do some ni- nice thing you know they were trying to destroy everything well, okay, maybe crap. someone maybe someone tried to even initially cure someone and then someone else like decided to unleash on the world. So. Oh, I can see that, that. I can see that spin where they're like, "Oh, we're gonna use this to do this," and then some other guy, "Nah, backstab. We're gonna do this." Hits the button, everything turns to stone. <laughs> <laughs> but don't take yeah. my being serious. <laughs> uh, serious. But yeah, it is. It is ongoing though. Yep. So but, that's nice. Yeah. All right, uh, well, I'm good to go. Yes. Yeah. So overall, so we're enjoying Doctor Stone. There was, if this season one's still yeah. stacked, it'd be still like one of my favorites. So it's still one of my favorites. Yeah. By far, <laughs> one well, of my favorite sequels. Um, but so, so that'll be it for Doctor Stone. Um, I think up next is uh, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Do I go there? Yeah. Oh, we'll hello, Jujutsu. Brian. You made it just in time hey, for Jujutsu Kaisen. Hello, sir. Oh. Uh, okay. Well. All right. Um. So just another. Like, uh, uh, Brian, uh, want to start? Or, did this show <laughs> continues to exceed expectations? <laughs> <laughs> This one was actually this really... Like, I mean, this is a total Brian show, so... I can <laughs> see. Hell yeah, dude! You got fighting on more fighting on top of fighting, dude. It's great. <laughs> but I still enjoy it, too. Even for all the fighting it does. Yeah. Taylor, your, uh, your thoughts. This episode was so awesome. Like, this was all about the girls. Nabarro was so freaking cool. <laughs> the animation was beautiful. We got to learn more yep. about the sisters and their complicated relationship with each other. Like, this episode was so great. This is easily my favorite episode of, like, the second portion. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, so this episode really made me enjoy uh, Maki as a character, but I don't really know about my like. Like I feel like we're trying hard to like to make us empathize with her, but it's like I, I, can't, I can't care. So yeah, much. after this, I just I still don't care for my. Like I said, it was Maki 100. <laughs> yeah. percent She showed that she is such a badass, and this person just has guns or a gun. That water animation was nuts. I, actually, the, yeah. the the animation just in general, everything. About Hope you it enjoy was, your Kill Bill in this episode. This is Mappa. <laughs> This is Mappa, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this. Just the brilliance of it. It's, uh, they, uh, the, the one thing I was actually not... They went through a lot of fights, too. But I'm assuming because this is the episode where they kind of budgeted for fights. I, I assume they just try to pack really whatever they could with just kind of giving us like, enough. Lot, of, like, so much animation budget being that thrown at lot. this episode. Uh, that was basically from like mm-hmm. beginning to end. Even like the, just like the normal shots, like they, when they were just talking, mm-hmm. like, like it, you could just tell like it was like a step up from like their normal just... Definitely, Dude, it's like shot. they're doing this along with like AOT, like and mm-hmm. um, I don't think they're. I think what I think these are two main shows, but I know they got work on Chainsaw Man too. So it's like stepping it up. Yeah, <laughs> they're all over everything, and people are sending them death threats. And for, stuff. Yeah, I know. God. <laughs> they have so many different things going on though. But you no, know, like this, like the episode. Uh, it was big. who else? What were the other fights? It was mainly just Maki uh, and Mai, and then um, oh, the witch girl, yeah. and... Oh, actually, no, no. Well, and, uh, the, game, the game was Maki and the blue hair chick, I think. Yeah. <laughs> was it Miki? I forgot her name. <laughs> Momo. Momo. Okay, Momo. Yeah. And then, then then it was, um, and then it was, uh, I think, Nomaru and, uh, Nomura and, um, the witch... Mai. Oh. Well, the witch no, girl. Nomura. Nomura and the, yeah. the witch girl. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah. then it was, mm-hmm. um, Mai and... Maki. The witch is a terrible character. I don't know why. I just can't stand this. Like the like, she just looks ridiculous. Well, every month. She's she right now. She's she, she, she's just a support to my. We don't really know much about her. That's why. She like, she's like the. Uh, she's like the. Was it the 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 vision for like the team? Basically, she has hey, like some type yeah. Of, you, you reconnaissance and all that stuff. Vision is sir. Don't be, <laughs> right? If you if you don't have those call outs, you're getting shot from your you know yeah. your rear her, end. Like seeing, like seeing some of her like strength and abilities. You know, it's a nice that she like stepped it up from what we first saw her with her. Uh, I wanted to see more of what happened with the hammer though. The second shot, I wanted to see what happened with the squeaky toy. 
Oh yeah, she's about uh, to they, they slow mo <laughs> hit the shit yeah. out of her. Yeah, we're just like, no, I can't, I can't hear it with the other <laughs> hammer. Like, let's try this one. Like she hit it once, but then that second shot didn't hit uh, or uh, connect. I, I wanted to see. Wait, like, talking about the squeaky hammer. The squeaky hammer. Yeah, <laughs> because it felt like it was like the first hit. Like like something else had to happen with that second hit for because it seemed like the first con like it hit with contact like didn't really do anything. But then you know she was gonna swing again, but then you know she got hit by a, a rubber bullet. Oh, the bullet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it ruined it off for us. I mean, it was oh, still an epic man. shot. Dude, that was that epic. It, was, it was a good cut to focus yeah. on, a, you know, the other fight then. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, but that, that whole kind of animation with the, like, she definitely kind of stepped it up from when we first saw her with like just like a few nails and then like the. Oh the, yeah, the, oh, you're talking about like, the, the first encounter with the. Yeah, the, where the I'm, curse. Yeah, because when I first saw, it, I was like, "Where the hell is this power going to go?" <laughs> well, <laughs> like, now like, you know. Where, where right. could it, yeah, yep. I know. Now basically they dumped all the animation budget. They're like, watch this. <laughs> yeah. Flying through the trees and everything. <laughs> throw a bunch of nails everywhere, and then they explode too, no? And plus, uh, I'll shoot, like, uh, um, even just like a big still, wanted to just see that second, just that second shot <laughs> connect. Because you knew something epic was going to happen. I don't know. I was satisfied with this episode, so I didn't either. Oh, no, I still, yeah. yeah, I still got nothing, <laughs> nothing bad to, to say about this. But that's really all this episode was. Was just like slight backstory. Yeah, just like, fight, 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 and the Mafia in my backstory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, it, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was awesome. Do we think though? Is it going to keep up with the same kind of like uh, animation and because this is basically like, going to be like the re- you know fighting for like the next few episodes? Because I'm it's... just wondering if like if the rest of the season just this tournament because we still haven't done like any of the yokai like extermination. Yeah, I like, think it up. would be because you figure we have. Um... Fushiguro and the Neji clone guy who we don't know how his eyes work but I think in the preview they show his eyes finally open and oh, they have like yeah. red so, so, around it so their fight or like yeah so we have we have their fight and then I guess that'll be everybody then right from both is the, the Kyoto is and the Tokyo speaks? side uh, or like oh, no, we, don't the, no. we don't have the speaking guy yeah. either I want to see that that's like my next like hype moment I want to see this man like, and then I, we're gonna get the curse crew back into the mix yeah hmm. As right. like probably the, the climax of this season. Like my previous things that I've kind of like uh, where like things where I've complained about like just like OP characters, but for some reason I've always liked characters with like those speaking abilities because it just makes them like really? it just makes them because yeah, it just feels like epic. It, it, where it's just like just like the like the, the was it like the weight of words just like uh where it just like affects them. It's uh it kind of reminds me of like that uh was it zombie disca where basically like she like just her words basically just just oh, would destroy the main chick oh yeah, yeah. yeah like where she be- where it's just like she couldn't speak because it basically like nobody could handle it like that I don't know why I've always just thought those moments or those type of like those abilities are just they're awesome hmm. I don't know why yeah like when he um, first like, well, like when he first like spoke when he said like don't move and then like it just made it seem so epic I thought that was really cool. But that's just my thing. Yeah, they're definitely putting a lot of impact on that guy's ability, so hopefully it, it pays off. Well, yeah, well, they, no, they, they say too, like you can counter it if you just put your curse. Yeah, guard your yeah, ability, right, and, your ears, yeah, so. yeah. They, they, or basically, they have to have that like focus there all the time. Just like him being like somewhere in the area that they like, could just they made it sound like like they just have to be ready for him. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's how, that's how we also got the the introduction to that other chick who uh, was sitting with like the principals and stuff. Mm-hmm. I can't remember her name for the life of me, but oh, oh right, that money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, the girl who's just like, I get run by money and I do everything by money. Oh, God, <laughs> capitalism, bro. <laughs> and Goto's just like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. There some, was it. Um... Yeah, no, like uh, I still what those like those main main fights. I mean, we still have uh, Yuji happening as well that we haven't seen. Uh, we saw a lot of yeah. with him and, and and Toto. They got so. they yeah. got like two and a half episodes. Yeah, but you know, so. like when the like when the main kind of like fight happens, you you would assume that the like, animation would be stepped up as well. Yeah, I mean, it'll definitely come back when the the curse tree guy arrives. Yeah, it'll be kind of like one of the, the last few things. I'm sure. Uh, but yeah. But no, it's definitely go. definitely interesting to see Mappa's focus on on this episode in the animation because I feel like Attack on Titan, like the, the animation hasn't been bad, but I definitely don't see the same level of what they're doing with um, like this show Jujutsu Kaisen better than Attack on Titan. And that, I would think it would be the opposite almost. Like yeah. I know Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot of like love from the fan base and everything is very popular in Shonen Jump right now. But I can compare that to like Tech and Titan. So I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So that's why I like. <laughs> I will. I feel. I feel like Gigak slash Gaunt like 
you know, on YouTube, like, I feel like he actually described it pretty well, where he was saying, basically, like, with Attack on Titan, it's, like, a 10-level story, and it's been a 10-level animation up until this point, and now it's down to, like, a 9. So it's still really, really good, yeah. just not quite where it was. And I feel like maybe they were refocusing on Jujutsu Kaisen, since that is still a smaller audience. They want to maybe bring more people into it. Like, the people who, like, everybody knows Attack on Titan. They're still giving us, like at least eight or nine quality. So like, yeah. why not put it into something new? I mean, it, like, it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Justin. I was just going to say, do we know, did MAPPA sign on for uh, Jujutsu Kaisen like well before they knew they were ever going to do Attack on Titan? I thought they did sign on for it first, yeah. yeah. I would assume so. So I don't know if that had like any effect of it. like, okay, this is what we know we have on the docket, so to speak. So let's put our top tier animators like mm -hmm. on this shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the... Um, but also with the Jujutsu anime, though, they, they, it basically boosted what the manga sales like crazy. Oh, yeah. no, definitely, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> like it's I did. Uh, it's getting to that um because like you know how at least it, I guess here right it doesn't really matter. But I mean because before like the big mangas are are like you know like uh, Hero Academy and Demon Slayer. Now it's like Tekken Titan or uh, Jujutsu Kaisen starting to get to their levels like really fast. So I like Jujutsu yeah. Kaisen more than Demon Slayer personally. How dare you! Well, okay. Okay. Good thing, good thing okay. Sasha's now, not here. He'd... Yeah, now we're <laughs> he'd start doing some power bombs, RKOs out of nowhere. <laughs> no, I, I, oh. I'm not gonna. I, I honestly like. I like them both a lot. Yeah, I'll also say too. This last thing for just oh, guys saying, like, I thought like uh, the ending of this episode paired with the, the ending song was really nice. Like, I really felt that. So appreciate. I still, I still hate the ending song. <laughs> I still hate the ending song. I, I appreciate oh, the ending song. Really? Oh, I like the end. I like the ending song. I can appreciate it, but oh, I man. do not care for the song. The opening is better, but yes. I like the ending song still. <laughs> this is the okay. only Soshunya song that I've heard that I don't like. The only one. I do not like the ending at all. Ugh. I think I appreciate it over time, so yeah. No, it just, I just like it the just visuals doesn't, of the ending. It doesn't fit the theme <laughs> of the show, bro. It, it, it just doesn't. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's why I say this episode though it was it was nice. Yeah, I don't know. I still I love the Juju strolls after every episode. I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a, oh, that's yeah. a high part for me like, as well. Are They're they, so well done. Are they like are they original? Or are they from the Omakes or for what? I have no, I have no idea. I still don't know. No idea. It's talking about like the ending sequences, like the yeah. cute little bits. Yeah, yeah the cute from, little bits. From the manga. Yeah. Okay, so oh, nice. the Omakes then. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry yeah. guys. Before I forget, I, I've been forgetting this taste like multiple times. Um, you know, at the end of the episodes where they kind of give like the backstory, you know, like the guy that was sitting in the tub, and I think it was Maki this episode. Like, did they actually like retire from being a like a like a jujitsu sorcerer? No, I feel like no. their definition of retired is means like they're not going to lose. Okay, tournament. okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I was gonna bring that up last oh, yeah. week, yeah. and I was gonna bring it up a little earlier when we were talking about it, but I forgot it again there. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's just like they're, they're out of the tournament. Okay, gotcha. Because at the same time, because like how they're like. Like it, when they're talking about their backstory or their story, it just mm -hmm. sounded like they didn't want to be one in like in general. Like like Maki basically sounded like in, in a sense she felt like she was forced to try. Hi. Because my my was the one who oh, was sorry, forced sorry. to try by Maki's sorry, actions. By Maki. Sorry, I got them mixed up. Yeah, but, yeah easy so to do. I, yeah. So like that's why like I kind of got like that feeling, and also the guy that was sitting in the tub where he felt like almost there was nothing else for him to do because mm -hmm. what else is he gonna do? But then they kind of yeah. had a conversation, and it, and it made it sound like he was gonna be. You know, retiring, not just like losing, but he was basically just gonna do something else. Oh you know, yeah, I, no. I, I don't know. I just kind of yeah, so, no. that makes sense though too. But I was just wanting to kind of clarify and just uh, what you guys' thoughts on that was. But okay, but no, that's the only thing that I wanted <laughs> I, to get up before I kinda, you had to like, watch like clips of this episode again, just see all the animations. So oh yeah, yeah, you just gotta, it's beautiful. Like you bookmark that and go back to it later. <laughs> and honestly, I was thinking of Demon Slayer when I was watching it. Like it felt very similar, just with the water and everything. I'm just like, I, all right. Yeah, that's, why, the that's water. what I told Threaten when this was over. I was like, I haven't felt that way since episode 19 of Demon Slayer. <laughs> also, like reading the manga for this part, I had no idea that animation was going to be this good. Like this was not that epic reading it in the manga. So they like stepped it yeah, up that, just that, for the. This film. is what you always hope for in an anime adaptation. Instead of like feeling like, mm -hmm. like you're missing stuff in the manga you want like to be upgraded because of the animation so yeah you get mappa you get that you get jc staff uh, debatable <laughs> you, you oh roll the dice God, hey, just, and the dice <laughs> might be uh loaded everyone was so like they're so like cautious about mappa just because right before tech and titan just because like the guy of high school and stuff so dude god of, god of high school still looked awesome just the yeah. story was executed poorly yeah 
<laughs> I, I can, he can only take you so far, sir. Yeah, that's most. <laughs> but the uh, next show that we're going to be talking about had some sweet scenes as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can say? Yes. So we're going to end it here for Jujutsu Kaisen. And then we're going to move on to Mushoku Kensei. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. You guys, no, Brian. No, Brian. No. <laughs> you guys can start to <laughs> seem more excited than I do. Again, this show exceeds expectations. <laughs> <laughs> what is it's the bar good... for expectations, Brian? I have to know. <laughs> it's such a good isekai. My expectations, okay, my bottom line expectation is like the Dragon Ball series, okay? Dragon okay. Ball, like the first okay. three shonen, that's, right? That sounds the so, OG Brian. shonen are like. That's... The basis of all expectations. When you say it like that, it sounds so basic. Context. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm a basic man with basic <laughs> needs, okay? Give uh-huh. me some badass fights, a decent storyline, and I'm set. Give me the animation too, and we're Gucci, okay? The story with Mushoku Tensei, though, I think it's a lot it. more solid. It's a lot more solid than the other ones. Dude, it's right. so like the the world building is so intense, man, and I love it. Yes. This, okay, so I'll say like I'll say like yeah, this is what isekais need to do with their world building. Like they always, it always feels so incomplete because they never finish them, or it's like it's so focused on like the whole like the whole um, aspect of like oh, I mean the no- the novelty of being in another world. They always focus on that, but like this one actually, it's really it's it's doing a good job of like building out the world and like it's it's going on a good case because we're still a kid in like the first like five six episodes, whereas like usually you get time skip by now. Yeah, time skips here and there. We got a few, yeah, like two. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, no, yeah. but it's like another another isekai. This would be like a time skip where you're already like in high school or at the high school academy or the military, yeah. Yeah, military you know academy. What? Those isekais, garbage. Yeah, well, yeah, because <laughs> they're all. Damn. That's what I'm saying. They come from this show. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, if they come from this show, they should be at least near as good. Have we got that? Fuck no. No. <laughs> <laughs> this show literally stops on all other isekai. Legit crown this shit the king of all isekai. It's already, gra- it's already the grandfather. So. Yeah, I mean, reg- grandfather, well, regardless, you can't though. disrespect the granddad, okay? Yeah. 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 Honestly, like, I'm, I actually really like the grainy animation. Like, it, it feels like it fits this so well. I don't know. I, I can't really tell. Like, I can't explain, like, why. I don't see it as, like, as a downside or anything. It's just, I just, no. yeah. I just, it re- I'm just used to it, or it's like, it's it's part of the show for now. It's fitting of the medieval fantasy realm of sorts. Yeah, it, it yeah. just looks nice. Like, I just think yeah. it looks really nice with it. Um, the, the, also, the, again, animation with just like these battle, like these magic battle fights. Like, oh, it's, man. It's, like, dude, it's uh, so sick. The last like eight minutes of the yeah. episode, I was just. I hope, see, like, see, when we do like an eventual time skip when he's like actually fighting other people, I hope that's like a preview, like the fights we get with like the magic combos. Yeah. Dude, and one of like the really tense scenes, like, I can't even explain it why it felt so tense, is like when they were. When they were going back in the carriage back to town, like when everything was quiet, where it felt like forever. I just felt like, dude, what the fuck? Like I just felt like it's like it was just yeah. tense. Like, and then yeah. like just the animation, of, like those, like the the uh, uh, the um, what the are bandit? they like? The, the, the yeah, the bad like the bad dudes. The, the I can't remember. Like, what the, like kidnappers or whatever. Yeah, kidnappers, basically, where they yeah. just flew on the horse and they just flew by. I just thought, like, damn, what the like? I don't know. I just felt like. I was gonna see like undead shit. I don't know. I felt like all of a sudden it was gonna be like a horror movie or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, didn't miss like that, but. I was gonna say the animation studio because like I don't remember where they're from, but I, I know it's it's an, it's a new studio made by a bunch of veterans. So, uh, like, okay. So and I'm pretty sure it's been said too how like they they basically made the studio just for, like for this show. Damn. So that's what's yeah. up. I mean, I, I I definitely agree with that from the animation, and I think the thing that makes it oh, so satisfying as well of like how pretty it looks is the the impact it has because you know yeah. you can have really pretty animation and if you don't like get the feel of like those visceral hits and everything that can be you know something that's a letdown but this show i think it has both and it does both so well also mm-hmm. uh, tizzle mentioned too one, only one key animated this episode which i remember too which is crazy like, that's insane. It, insane it's like how um it's like because there's like there's one guy who works on bones who was like he used to be like a naruto animator and he did like a lot of the good the uh, naruto fight scenes he moved mm-hmm. to bones and started doing the hero academia fight scenes too so, Dude, that guy's so that's why, this is why like like that, this is why we, like it like like on reddit people like i always ask about staff credits because like it is the the talent that really matters a lot more much more than the studio uh, the, the animator's name is yeah. um egg firm brian i think egg oh. firm what? Yeah, that's producer. It's the studio name. Studio name. Yeah. I think. Also, sorry. Kind of going back to like the world building. Like if, if, at first, like how I remember at the beginning of this, it made it seem like like magic rules all. 
But but now like I'm getting to this point in the show, like like all, even like the physical fights, like the like sword techniques are insane as well. Yeah, dude, like, I love that shit, oh, man. Like, Fuck. The, like when the was it like like new uh, new waifu just flew in there, Ghislaine? Like, yeah. Oh my God, like it, it's like basically just like a, where they have like almost like top tier uh, physical abilities as well. It's not just like magic that just rules all, but it's more of like a kind of oh. like it's more balanced. Again, like I hope it's like a preview of like the fights we see later on when we you get the time skip. I just yeah. I just want to mention when in this episode when he met like the he met basically like his second cousin and she starts being the shit out of him. I was laughing <laughs> so hard when yeah. that happened. Usually I hate like I hate like annoying characters like that, but that was just really funny when that happened. <laughs> Wait, which part? What happened? When um when was he was the because he has to tutor like the little like you know because uh. The, the the mayor is Paul's cousin, so technically they're related. So it's basically his the that little girl that girl he's tutor is, is like his second cousin. Oh, okay. and then she okay, slapped yeah. him, and he slapped him back. She slapped her back, <laughs> and then and she just punches the shit out. She start punching shit. Out. <laughs> I was yeah. laughing so hard. Yeah, uh, and it's funny seeing Rudy's like pure fear in that moment too, of like holy shit, like yeah. it's no, coming down. Pure fear too, like. Where he, you know, he basically saw like you know death in a sense for the first time. Maybe yeah, like, at the end of the episode, he's just like, "Yeah, I died once. What happens when I die in this world?" Like, yeah, and I know that's kind of a trope that does come up at some point with other easy guys, but I like the way that they did it. It was kind of nice. Fair, like, I didn't even think about that until yeah. you mentioned. It. Well, because <laughs> again, like like other easy guys, they don't treat it as seriously. It's always like a fun magic world where you're OP. So it's nice yeah. that they're taking the seriousness of like of of Rudy and, and just like. Just realizing, oh, like you know, like you know, people die, people like really die in fantasy worlds too, and like you could still die in this fantasy world if you're not careful, even with how careful he's been. So yeah, yeah. there was a uh, one other line that uh, Rudy said where he was like kind of tying back to his experiences in the real world, where he's like, "Money can't buy Dere," which I thought yeah. it was like a play on words of like Sundere, because Eris is like a huge Sundere, and he's just like, "I love that shit." Like that was so Dude, like just comedy. subtly snicked in there. The comedy's yeah. a one. <laughs> yeah, com- comedy's like it's like perfect in this in this show. Like I've I've not like uh, I've not hated. I don't think any of the comedy yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the bigger question I have is like obviously we'll probably get more episodes focused between Eris and Rudy, kind of their relationship growing and him training her. But at the beginning they said what that. Rudy is going to be with Ghislaine and Eris for five Nine, years. Five years, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. So he's going to be, because so he's seven now. So do you think we'll, he's going to be 12 by time skip, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think the time skip is. I think Because that's what I'm wondering, like, yeah, do we get, like, one or two episodes max with that focus, and then they're going to be like, all right, the other three years or whatever, just huge time skip, and then now we get yeah. back. Yeah. I like, can see there being a couple different ways where it's, just, where one, they're either kind of, like, showing, like, bits and pieces, like, you know, progressing through the time, or they show like you know one episode or something like kind of like how you said Justin, and then they go to yeah. the skip, and then they just show like they just fill it in later. Yeah, because the only reason I ask is like looking at the promo visuals. We now have all the characters that they yeah. show on that promo visual. So Eris was the last girl that we hadn't seen yet. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I hate her type of character though. But we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> I don't, see how this I don't, goes. I don't like either. Really? Yeah. Hopefully she like she calms down when she gets older. That's like the only thing I can hope for. <laughs> Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with those those Sundarays. Like she just reminds me of a uh, Taiga from Toradora, just like complete hothead. Like <laughs> <laughs> decent kid out of her. Actually, I mean, yeah, like, you need different. to have diversity in your cast. You know, like your harem needs diversity. Yeah, I know. I, think, I, think I know. Fine, right? play, play everybody's interests. I know. <laughs> I got yeah, it. You sound disappointed, sir. I, I don't know. No, why. I mean no, because I I still like. I mean I, his his uh his uh master. I still think is you know, top notch. I mean, mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. Uh, Gil- was it Glane? Or- yeah, Glane. Yeah, Glane. She's also top notch as well. She's right up there. As- I-, I loved in the beginning when Rudy is translating the note for Glane. Oh, yeah. She's saying, like, you know, what, all the shit that Paul is saying about her. And she's like ready to beat the shit out of Rudy. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. It was a joke. Like, she's like, oh, oh OK. She's he, like, he still recognizes you as the best, like, swordsman in all the land. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, why would he say, like, oh, just joking, just joking? Because he's just translating the letter. Like, it's not actually, you know... Yeah, uh, I partially <laughs> thought that, like, he made up, like, a line that Paul said at one point yeah. just to see, like, what Ghislaine would do. But I yeah. guess I should have known better with Paul. He's just a <laughs> womanizer till the end. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, fucking Paul, I feel, dude. What I a... feel sorry for all the females in this world. Sounds like Paul's been with them one way or another. <laughs> what, what a Chad, <laughs> It's like, how, how did Zenith end up with Paul at the end of the day? <laughs> Like the holy white mage ends up with him. <laughs> yeah, everyone needs a white mage. Come on now. Yeah, true, true. But the, the whole thing is now like uh, I, I know like it's it's in like oh shoot, what's her name? The 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 elf. 
Sylph girl that the Sylph? Sylph? Sylphie? Or Sylph? Sylph. Yeah, Sylph. she has like yeah. three different Sylphiet. Sylph. Sylphiet, yeah. yeah. Whatever word yeah. they use. Oh, Sylph? Sylphie? Whatever, Whatever you want to call her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylph. Okay. Sylphie, okay. sure. I'll just, okay. Um, it's more of like, you know, what's going to actually happen after five years. Um, like, you know, just like a part. Like, if they you know, eventually go back to that as well. Because it, mm. it's still kind of like the whole thing where I kind of took it as where even the message where he's like, yeah, I decided she's not good enough for you. Even though, like, just a couple episodes prior, he was saying about how, uh, about how basically teaching him the ways in a sense. Um, and then deciding to go the way like he's like they're going now where he basically says, Oh yeah, I got you the job, but you're going to be gone for five years. <laughs> it, it's just like, it was just, it was a completely kind of blindside. I keep thinking like, you know, she has the green and red eyes or green hair, red eyes. Like, you know, what, what's like, is something going to become more of that? Like later on, I don't, yeah. I don't, the way they say I, it in this episode, it felt more like, like, like Rudy was saying how like uh, he was like, Sylph was like depending too much on him, so that's why they need to split. That's why that's just for for Paul to split them up. Is like, like yeah, okay. she needs to be independent on her own, so you stop like spoiling her. That's what I got from this. No, yeah, I, I, think I think it's, it's more of I think it's more of the fact that it's also for Rudy as well. He can't depend on her as much. He needs to grow as a person to be able to I just become too, better yeah. in general. With the best of his abilities, yeah, right. Because yeah. it almost feels like he like in a sense. I can see him like uh, you know downplaying. Yeah. Uh, just to where it's not he's not really learning anything. He's basically just kind of hanging out. Showing yeah. what he already knows, this, instead of going like above and beyond, his right. like his like what he knows. I mean, as much as a dick as Paul is, I I think yeah. he made the right choice here, right? Because if he would have let Rudy do whatever he want, I think that's the reason why Rudy was capped out of where he is, and he wasn't like becoming yeah. more stronger or more proficient in, in his magic abilities. Well, the thing is, Sylphie is picking up fast though too. Like she was, um, because where even he like he where uh, Rudy. Was even saying, "Oh yeah, I'm just like a special kid." And then here she's like, you know, like uh, you know, uh, doing magic abilities with no chance whatsoever as well. Yeah, but for sure, if definitely they would just stay together, they would have like, they would have been each other's handicap in a sense to yeah. where they would stunt each other's growth. Oh yeah. So this is definitely going to make both of them grow exponentially in their way. Yep. So so after the five five year time skip, magic battle between the both to mm-hmm. see just where they are. Yeah, but, but you know. Is, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because if you can nominate them in bed, you know that's all that really counts, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> I, I, I hope. I actually hope like Rudy can like become like where he actually becomes like uh, better with the sword as well. I want to see like just like that that back where he like because uh, it feels like it, it's going to be kind of leading towards that, or he might just come with like because every time like it seems like where he has like swords flying at him, where it just feels like he's got to like somehow do something to counter that because like the physical aspects of fighting, like he still gets like he can get destroyed by it. Right. Yeah. Um, I kind of like, almost don't want that to be Devil's Advocate. Like, I'd rather have him just be more OP in the magic line and show that it's not necessary to just be this OP in both like yeah, weapon I arts. Mean, yeah, I, I feel like if that were to, if that were the case as well, I think the show would do it just fine. I think. Oh yeah, maybe, definitely. Because yeah. like when the sword was flying at him, he either can like you know become like better at it or like come with uh, um, alternative ways of taking care of it or or somehow like yeah. But like, Hunters. Hunters, I'll say right. like, I'll say like, are the isekais with all three characters? They always have, they're always OP in both. So I don't know yeah. if they're taking from this show. I, I, I can see like, yeah, this show being the one that like has the main characters OP in both. So well, the thing is, we're seeing though, like he's OP in a sense, but like in the like the overworld of everything, like he's definitely not as OP as we thought. Like yeah. he's he could still be beat uh, pretty easily, uh, and then also like just kind of like the level of like. Uh, where like they, they are of like the sword abilities like again I forgot her name uh, uh, Glaine Glaine yeah I don't know why I can't yeah. remember that where like basically you're showing how we're I mean just like she it, just like how her how, how we saw it she just seemed like just stronger than like just insanely strong mm-hmm. and where like Rudy's nowhere even close to that yeah man just look forward to that you know physical training arc dude. This man's gonna you know, beat down by a sword, I mean, <laughs> come back stronger every time, you know. Well, so and far, learn from his mistakes. So far, we've seen like those like uh, physical training arcs, and he has not improved very much. Well, again, that, he's still seven because, years dude, old. He's still, so... he's still a child, you know. He has yet to hit his preteens, and once he hits that puberty stage, that's when the beef up happens, you know. Yes, bulk yes. season, and it's over. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, because mages are always bulk. They're always hey. slim build. They don't need muscles. Hey, you and never know. You bulk up and then slim down. That's the process. Dude, this, that goes. This, hey, this guy uses this guy uses, just uses magic to propel himself where he needs to go. I mean, he's using mm-hmm. he's using wind, ma- uh, fire, water. This guy doesn't need to to actually you know gain muscles for speed. This guy just you know blasts. Oh, I don't know. If this if this episode 
if this episode taught him anything, it's the fact that he definitely needs to bulk up in the, uh, the physical area, you know? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I can, I can see that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's probably going to, like, bulk up and get good at, like, like the sword play. Probably, like, I don't know, pre-teen. Probably, like, between the ages of, like, 12 and 16. Mm-hmm. Next time, Skip, you'll probably, we'll probably see more of that. Just because this man's still, like, a child. I don't think there's a child that's, like... <laughs> The size of Arnold or anything. Like I mean, that, I, so. I would, yeah, I, I would <laughs> hope not. <laughs> but but yeah. it's, I don't know. But yeah, next time skip, he'll only be twelve, so we'll, we'll miss those teen years, Brian. <laughs> I, I guess. But Let's maybe the see. maybe the time skip after that, because we also forgot to mention, like in the news, that there was like plans of what of having this as like a long running show as well. Uh, yeah, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw both you guys shared that, so yeah, that's hype. Oh, oh, yeah, I, love it. I hope that I hope that holds. We'll see because we'll apparently, apparently, my mistranslation. Mis- mistranslation. So we'll, we'll. Oh, fun! We'll keep. We'll, <laughs> Thanks, David. Oh. We'll keep, we'll, Thanks, Reddit warriors who think yeah. they know Japanese. <laughs> so, <That's... laughs> we'll, we'll keep on hoping. I think. I think. You'll, I think in this age, I think more an- studios are realizing that like anime is, is is important. So I think they'll keep continuing it. I don't think they'll just be a one off just for because the light the light novels or web, web novel and light novels both so old that like. Yeah, I don't see it as like a promotion thing. I think like they realize they really need to adapt the whole thing. I really hope it's not a one off. I I want to see this whole story through in this animation as well. Well, well how's the how's the anime holding up and popularity wise in Japan? I don't. Remember. I know like the industry they really enjoy it. I don't know about like popularity wise or how like the numbers. So like yeah. the score of the show, it's actually holding up really well. Um, like who's watching? Like the people who are watching it really like the show. Yeah, but that's internationally uh, right, not just yeah, Japan. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know how. Well, in Japan, so we'll see. This show's already getting like a crazy amount besides, of figures. Oh, besides, I know you know ReZero author is a huge fan, so again, yeah, like, a lot of respect from the anime industry. I just don't know what the fan base. Yeah, yeah, it's also crazy too for like, how many like I kind of like mentioned before how many uh like the usually like a lot of the other shows like we have to wait forever for figures to come out, and this one is already I think like uh, I've seen like three of them like oh, confirmed really? so I didn't far. Know that. Yeah. So oh like wow! The, like, yeah, like the master, the red-haired girl, and Sylphie. Those are the three I've seen so far. Okay, oh, and I, it's only a matter of time before they have one of uh, uh, the, the, the cat girl, um, Ghislaine. Ghislaine. Okay. So Ghislaine. Like, I'm gonna have to like put that somewhere on one of my monitors. Yeah, we'll get some note cards. <laughs> you just paste it behind there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, so it's only a matter of time. She's they, gonna have if one. They plan it, then yeah, they probably had a huge marketing push. So it, it yeah. so it probably didn't did well. They're that confident in the marketing. Yeah, I hope it continues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. It's got him. <laughs> I think but even I think, I think even does doesn't do well in Japan. They'll still make it because like the streaming rights are still really good. So no, yeah. okay. Yeah, all right, that's all I got though. We yeah. definitely went over time. <laughs> that's all right. So Mushoku, hey. Mushoku Tensei gave it well worth the respect it, it deserved. Yeah. So that's yep. it for Mushoku Tensei. Remember one next to Promise Neverland. Um. So, so we hopefully we all. Got over the shock of last week's episode. Um, getting into this this next episode, which which by the way is like the episode before <laughs> recap, so it's gonna be weird going to that week one after this. But I don't know. Just to me, it just felt really weird. Like the whole all the events that happened last week, and then we just like it felt like what was a, a time skip, like a year time skip to some mm-hmm. new town in this this new shelter, and just interesting all these new things. And then, of course, here's with the cliffhanger at the end. So it's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I, I've just accepted it at this point. I'm just, I've like, I've accepted that, like, that um, it's just going to be really different than what we were expecting. So I'm just going to sit here and wait. I was, I felt like I wasn't too much attached to too much of what's going on, but I'm curious, mainly for Justin's, like, point of view from like, yeah, I'll let, uh, I'll let Brian and Sasha give their input before I. Who the hell is that blonde chick? Which the blonde chick. chick. You mean oh, who's with who? them in the in the church, the, of the girls? Yeah, there's the, like this blonde girl. Who is that? She uh, was, I think she was there. I think before. she's been. Yeah, I think she's been there. Yeah, I think her name is. Did she like Pond? change her hair or something? Because her hair might have gone like longer, longer or something. Something yeah. did change though. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, that might have been Goldie Pond or Yugo. I think that's her name. Yo, man, you need you need to chill. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I I heard all the hate guys, and I must say, I thought the show went in a 
amazing direction. It was so different from anything I've ever experienced before. Yes. That I, I, I was just enlightened by the lack of continuity from the past two episodes. Or, you know, usually Promise Neverland is a show that gives you this great sense of tension and psychological warfare. All of that was removed to actually make me feel a lot more pleasant because I knew that every <laughs> scene in the show was absolutely meaningless. And so it was great. And by the way, the big reveal of Norman at the end, I just thought was it hit so hard because they didn't set any expectations for it. It just came out of the blue. He likes to wear costumes. It makes sense because he was always an outside the box thinker. And in general, um, you know, it was just an amazing outside the box episode from a new perspective. I think if you take eight drops of LSD and let five hammers hit you in the head simultaneously, it's one of the best okay. shows ever. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> I'm really curious yeah. about like the, that Norman reveal too. Like, I wonder like in the manga, uh, <laughs> it was also just huge like setup, and it's just like just, just it's just like just felt like just, just I don't know. Just it hurt. Just gave, it hurt gave it to us in the anime. Like, it, all right, this is where I will begin my rant. So <laughs> I, everybody, I want to hear, hear it. Buckle like, in. Popcorn's ready. Uh, yeah. All right. First and foremost, I know everybody has their own opinions about my anime list, but if you look at my <laughs> anime list, you'll notice that the show has drastically dropped Strike in score side. from this last week. It went from, I think it was a, it was like an 8 point something last week. It's now a 7.8, so manga fans and source fans have just come to the site uh, and I think before one that, star bombed it. I think before that, it was like it dropped like 0. 0.5 or something. Yeah, crazy. yeah, it's, so. it's continued to just drop and skyrocket, but I think it took a relatively large jump this week. Even skates above it now, which I didn't think that would ever happen. But anyways, um, yeah, what they did this episode is just... It's such a slap in the face to the source material. Oh, God. Nothing, nothing, none of this happens this way. Like... There is, you know, some layer of involvement later in the show with, like, you know, them as humans kind of intermingling with demon towns, and that's all I'll say. But the Norman reveal, done completely different. This was, like, uh, I was so upset the way that they did this, because even as, like, an anime-only fan, like, this reveal is so lackluster. It's just <laughs> like, okay, you know, previously yeah. we were running away from... um the bunker into this, you know, forest from this big ass demon completely skipped over what the result of that was. Um, two, they just kind of glossed over like, okay, how are you as a bunch of human kids able to go inside and out of demon villages and demons don't notice you at all, except when, you know, a random breeze happens to come by and then all of a sudden demons can smell the human scent on you, but it had never happened for the whole other year that you've, you know, been here. Uh, it, it, and I said last week, they literally skipped 60 chapters of source material. Holy like, shit. There are arcs in characters that, what they did right now, we're not seeing them. And the reveal of Norman has so much more emotional impact in the manga than it does this way. And it is this huge buildup to how it happens between Emma and Norman and them. Where in this, it's just kind of like, oh, hey, sup. And they're just like, oh, Norman, hey, sup. So, all I'm going to say is, just go read the manga. If you want to continue and watch it, that's one thing, and you can, you know, have your own view of Promised Neverland, but you're at some point going to go back to the manga, and you're going to be like, what the fuck did I just watch this that's, season? That's what I'm basically going to do later, but I just want to say, <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is that we got Tokyo Ghouled. Yes, and I, and I told Taylor and Sasha <laughs> offline, I was like, They're, they pulled the Tokyo Ghoul. They did a route, they did a route A for... Oh, God. So... Why does this, why does this keep happening? Like I thought we were, uh, I, I thought we were past this I point. I don't know. And it's like the author's working with them this season. Like it did so well last season. I was I was just gonna say, you know, when when we got baited by thinking that all the authors gotta be there, it's just like now we know how Johan feels when Kishimoto went back to Baruto. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> I I honestly don't like. <sighs> Uh, you know, last week I was like, okay, we'll give him one more episode to salvage it. Maybe he'll do something that will maybe, you know, change the way that series of events happens. And this time it's just like, nope, just a huge slap in the face. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know how you can salvage this. It's almost like with what they jumped to, I feel like they're trying to end the show this season. Like as crazy as that sounds, like I think that's what they're trying to do. And the fact that they're doing that is such a disservice to why Promise Neverland is so like well regarded as a manga. So... 
Yeah, mm-hmm. long story short, continue watching if you want. Just know that whatever happens, it could be true to source material. It could very well not be. But at the end of the day, if you want to get the true promised Neverland that has built such hype in regard in what you loved in season one, go read the manga. That's basically all I need here. I don't know. Also, yeah. Okay, I'll also keep watching for the rest of the season because it's like it's it's like straight okay i'm committed now i guess i'll have to finish i'm not yeah i'm not, I'm not 160 episodes okay. in but and, and, and i'm in the, i'm in the same boat where i i probably will watch it too just because like knowing what they've done i, I just want to see where it goes like it's such a different jump now so yeah i'm i'm not gonna lie like these last two episodes has turned me off the show so hard compared to season like season one i was hooked it was like crack to me I was like, I can't get enough of this show. These last two episodes, I'm like, man, fuck this show. I'm just watching oh, it times two speed at this point. Honestly, I just want to get this shit over with. I'm like, this is so. <laughs> if you want to go to where chapter two to start it, go to like chapter 45 or 50, like somewhere around there in the manga. Start right from there. Because what they skipped, like one, the reveal of Norman is done completely differently. Way more emotional impact. The reveal of William Minerva way different different impact you get a whole ensemble of characters but one character specifically in the bunker that is like pivotal to the love for the series and then also in these arcs that they've skipped there are so many badass battles between humans and demons that occur that man even i had forgotten at the time like i went back and was like what happened between you know these chapters and it's just like holy shit like there was so many good fights into like you know your point brian of just wanting to get like that kind of psychological like action and everything like that's exactly what would or should have happened after the bunker scene like that's what was coming and everybody was so excited for and they were just like nah fuck it one year skip oh hey here's norman all right let's go yeah like it was <laughs> like i i i'm pretty sure last week was like the bunker episode yeah or no yeah the well the, yeah, yeah, yeah so like i remember during our discussion i was like hmm you're shit talking pretty hard at this point. I'm just gonna real quick check out the manga, see where it's at, and they introduce a whole different character. I was like, "Yo, where the fuck is this guy? Yeah. He looks yep. like a fucking badass in this." Yep. Show. I was like, yep. And like, I felt like most of you guys are gonna really like that character. And yeah, that, I was like, that character and other characters that you get to meet when shit goes down at the bunker eventually it's going to have so much more impact and meaning. It's not going to be this bullshit of like, oh, a bunch of kids fired two arrows at this military trained officer and somehow, you know, <laughs> knocked his gun out of his hand and then escaped. Like, it's so bad. And it's, without much more spoiler, it is graphic as hell in the manga. Like, you're going to get some, like, fucked up shit to come down the road. So, if that's what you wow. like and that's what you enjoy and that's what you enjoyed from season one where it's dark, psychological, and, like, really messed up, like... Just start at chapter 50. That'll put you right at the bunker, introduce you to this new character that everybody from the manga loves, and quote-unquote, the best arc of the entire season oh that he kicks off. Really? I mean, oh, makes yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so. That's why, that's why like, everybody's oh, so God. mad. I mean... You know, I think we all just need uh, a new perspective. If we just practice some mindfulness, we'd really... Yeah, so deep breathing can... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, question, man. Justin. Yeah. Uh, I, I did some perusing online. And okay. the common sentiment I've gotten is, even though uh, this part has been horribly butchered, many people thought Promise Neverland started off great, then it still kept that steam going, yep. and then they said the last third of the manga kind of teetered off and fell flat for them. Yeah, um, so that's that's the one caveat I will say. Like, when you go down the manga route, like, you're going to get the best arcs of the season, but the ending is going to be... A little bit controversial or or may fall flat, but at the end of the day, uh, yeah, go ahead. Is there any chance, like even like a speck, a modicum of a chance Mm -hmm. that this has a better ending than the manga? With what they did right now, I don't think so. Because it's like there's so much stuff that they skipped and there's so much still that has to be covered that if they're trying to finish the show this season, like the pacing it, it's just i don't think i've ever seen the pacing at this rate that they'd have to do with how many episodes we have left and how many chapters still were there so i'm gonna say no i've lost faith in in the anime portion of it even with the author on it like just go read the manga i can't say anything Fair. else like sad face yeah damn no it sucks like, season one was done so well and so true to source material, and season two started off that way, and then they were just like, nope, Tokyo Ghoul. 
I almost, I almost think Tokyo Ghoul was better in this case. Like, wow, that's, that's a that's something. a big thing to say. Like, it's bad, but I don't know. Maybe prove me wrong. Maybe I'm just you know, know jaded and with the. I have a feeling. Well, like, I, I oh god. I was gonna say I don't. I don't think you're jaded at all. It's just to me. I'm. I'm. I'm very curious. What is the missing piece in this equation? Because you have a very successful source material. Mm-hmm. You have an amazing season one that's quite popular in Japan and overseas. Yep. And I mean, it got all, it's getting a live action adaptation, so it's like exactly. What so happened? where where did season two like? Yeah, that's what I'm curious about. I don't know enough details about what what's going on behind the scenes is the writer behind it? i don't know if the writers are smoking crack or what he's doing because it's almost (laughs) like he listened to what the manga told them that or the manga fan base told him he didn't like from his series and he did the complete opposite on things that they were okay with and he's changing things that people liked so i don't know yeah tough pill to swallow because this is season one was really Top I mean, tier anime. yeah, I would say this was one of the top five shows that people were hyped on coming into this new season. And now it's like it sucks to be the person who has to come in and be like, hey, guys, like shit sucks. Like it's, you know, animation and everything's still fine and all that. Like, I'm sure it'll be, you know, probably a, a seven and a half rated show at the end of the season. But in terms of the manga, at like an eight point five or eight point six or whatever it's at, like, you know what I'm curious about? All right, so Attack on Titan. People freak out over like a Titan's toes being too big compared to the previous studios, and you know they're <laughs> sending people death threats. Yep. What are they going to do to these Promised Neverland people? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> these guys, like car bomb them? Nah, I think like Promised Neverland fans like Attack on Titan. Its own f- like fandom. There are very few fandoms that are like Titan first and foremost. Like even though Promised Neverland has a pretty substantial fandom. I don't think they'll ever do anything of that regard. To like, AOT. Yeah. AOT. Uh, it's like you said, like they're adapting, like Mappa is ad- adapting everything like spot on. And, they, and the fan base is still complaining. And like this, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, for Promise Neverland, we're complaining. But at least we're not like sending death threats or like complaining about, you know, other stuff. We're just telling people like, hey, they're changing a bunch of shit. Like do yourself a service and just go read the manga. I don't think that's like, you know, as absurd of a take at the end of the day. Fair. Uh, and if anything, you'll save time. You can, uh, like I said, uh, Promised Neverland, I think, is 181 chapters. And I mean, I don't know what rate everybody reads at, but that's a pretty, pretty easy pill to swallow for a series to just blow through in a, in a couple weeks. True you don't that. have to invest much time into that. So. Wow. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe somehow he'll capture well, everybody's heart somehow some way but i'm not i'm not waiting for it <laughs> stick a flower in my chest and eat my brains because uh, yeah, the show is that's, done for basically yep i have a the feeling w- that uh the later discussion episodes will be much shorter <laughs> I don't th- probably I don't the only know. thing i will say that i did like from this episode is how they touched upon the uh two young kid demons that were like basically getting cancer because they hadn't eaten human meat or like high grade human meat so that was something that was like a good reflection of the importance of like why demons need to eat meat and how they kind of like deform further if they don't eat human meat so yeah i agree it's just the problem with this entire season is anything that's brought up that's slightly interesting is completely disregarded right after yeah so it's like the help writing we didn't really get too much in that the phone call afterwards like yeah you heard her conversation but there's no follow-up on that they just left yeah. the bunker. yeah so there's like 15 like, to 20 characters in the arcs that they skip that you don't get to see god damn that's yeah, so many it's, what the fuck it's it's, it's bad this is gonna be a must read must read now yep yep please go read and then hopefully when everybody's read it we can uh we can have a separate discussion of <laughs> what happened with the anime and then what we all think now that we've read the manga. <laughs> Perfect special episode. Exactly. You know what they should do? They should go the FMA route and just take everyone who worked on the second season and sacrifice their bodies for a philosopher's stone. To there we go. <laughs> restart and wipe people's memories. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> he took all the characters from the manga and he's just trying to use a philosopher's stone to do the rest of the series the way he wanted to or the way he thought it should have been done. <laughs> But yeah, wow. so so bold, so stunning. I'm definitely in for the rest of the season. Sounds uh, good, man. Me too. <laughs> it's a new direction. Let's do this, guys. All right. Namaste. 
Yep. All right. I think that's going to be it for <laughs> this week. Yeah. Honestly, Sorry, everybody. Honestly, honestly yeah, it's kind of a downer, but it needs to be said. So I think we were yeah. expecting it. If anything, if, if trying you, to save you time. If you watch this week's episode, you know what, what, was, what we're going to say. So. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, even with everything they've changed, like, there are worse shows that you could be watching and wasting your time <laughs> watching at the end of the day, so, you know. Yeah. Like Black Clover. Not that, <laughs> but... <laughs> okay. So that's gonna be it for, uh, for, for Promised Neverland. We're gonna move on next to Hori Mia. Ooh, so this was a yeah, spicy episode. episode. Yep. We this got... episode was so cute, you guys. My heart can't take this though. <laughs> I was like, just, oh, it was too I'll much say for that, me. like, I'm very surprised that, like, we actually got, like, a relationship going in the first, like, what, like, five episodes? This, like, never happens, yep. so. Yeah, you do like to let it simmer for longer, like, introduce some drama in between to get to that point, but they're moving the ship forward, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, yeah. I I personally really enjoyed the focus on uh, Sakura and her kind of just fixation with Toru and just how that kind of played into that, with Remy. The, the green haired girl. Yeah. So, yeah. Sakura, green haired girl. <laughs> Remy, pink haired girl. Um, I knew yeah. Remy. Toru, I purple haired guy. Okay, I, know, I, know, I know everyone else. I just remember Sakura for some reason. Yeah. So, um, I thought it was really good of, you know, the whole focus on how. Um, Sakura didn't want to Remy to know that she had, you know, an interest in Toru when she was kind of looking at him outside the second floor window. And then kind of how it just, you know, evolved further into Sakura's insecurities with the way that she looks and how she feels like, you know, oh, why would anybody, you know, like me when I when there's Remy here who's like this kind of quote unquote like very bubbly, outgoing, like pretty individual. And, you know, Sakura even kind of has that um flashback to how they used to call them like the beauty and the beast as the like two duo in school. So I thought that was really kind of cute, but then also fitting of like what kind of really does happen, you know, during those type of days in high schools, you know, we all I'm sure have those like memories of, you know, comparing yourself to others or in one way or another, and just kind of how sometimes that really kind of affects your mental in certain states and things like that. So I really like that. I think it does a really good job of like resonating as a viewer. Yeah. I think all of the, all of the bits of like how Sakura was, feeling self-conscious and also um at the, you know the beginning of the episode opened up with hori learning about how um miyamaru is like walking with some other girl and she gets all super self-conscious about it and just like all worked up like coming up with different theories in her head i thought both of those situations were very authentic to teenage girls in high school and i thought they were really well done so i i enjoyed that um I mean, no, it's good to have, good to have the, the thumbs yeah. up there from you know the was female that, side because we can all sit here and be like oh yeah that's exactly how it goes but then we're just like oh none of us oh, are yeah, actually say, female we just think too. that's it, how it goes it, <laughs> lot, it happens a lot in this rom-com manga so i wasn't surprised but it's, it was so good so i just want to give a shout out to the dad because I, I thought that was the older brother at first oh same <laughs> kiyosuke kiyosuke, kiyosuke kyoko I was like oh okay that's like the naming commission of like the, the siblings why is shota not like Start the kills to match the siblings, and then it's the dad, like, what? It's like, yeah, that's Mr. Hori to you, okay, sir. <laughs> right? I Sorry. love how like Mr. forward Hori. he is in the whole interaction with uh Mia and stuff, and just be like, oh, so you're dating my daughter, huh? And just like grilling him over and over. So that was fun for I, sure. I was not expecting the dad to show up because I thought, I thought the whole setup was that like, it, like, uh, she was like a single mom because the dad either wasn't there or he was like like dead or something so i thought like the whole yeah. thing about her yeah mom always being I'm busy because kind of... she's a single mom so we don't really know like what he does yeah. either still that explains like why he's just kind of in and out and yeah. why yeah. everybody was also shocked to kind of see him so it was, it's a really weird family dynamic yeah mm. yeah so i'm assuming like i mean the ser the stereotype answer would be like he's a musician he's just always traveling around and never seeing his kids or they got beta of like oh he's actually like a traveling like salary man he always has to get reassigned everywhere and that's that's why mm. like he's never home. But I don't. I I I don't. Overall, I I thought his character was pretty funny, and I thought that fit well with like the scenes. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And then you know, guys, I don't want to ruin this great mood that we have going on here. But do um, it. Can do we just, it. <laughs> can we just uh you know pay attention to the small fact that Hori never said I love you back. So. Do we know this is going to be a real thing or not? Is it going to be one-sided? <laughs> Who knows? But Say uh, it ain't so. 
Man, but these girls right. are these girls are finicky. We have to. Uh... She, she said she felt the same way as him at the end of the episode, like right after they held hands. She was like, "I feel that way about you too." Not about yeah. the love thing specifically, but I feel like that's implied. No, Taylor, if I said I love you, you better say it back, all right? <laughs> that's how you know it. Like, it's <laughs> really good enough when right? Mia took the time to be like, oh, now I understand, like, how much emotion goes into, like, I'll see you tomorrow. I think, like, that was kind of a way that Mia was like, oh, man, like, this really means a lot to her now that we've kind of established the relationship. And he even knows, like, oh, man, I can't, like, take these things, like, lightly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just, it's, it's still early <laughs> in the season. You know, the guy like admitted oh, I'm, openly. I'm fully for it. I'm waiting yeah. for some type of drama this, to I, I need the spice, you know? It, yeah. It, it's happening. It's going to happen for sure. I don't want any spice. I, I just want it to be more of this. It's so cute. This, I just, this is, I think, right. no, this, this, I think that he's this. so adorable and I just want him to be happy. I don't want anything to ever make them sad. No drama. Let's just keep this slice of life. <laughs> yeah, this is like one of the few like rom coms where you don't have to worry about some other chick showing up, hopefully, and messing up with the love triangle. So, like, mm -hmm. even though like, like <laughs> this is kind, of, this is kind, of, <laughs> this is kind of like what I was saying. How like I wish this, is, I wish like it was focused between the two. I really, I really mean it's just like it's nice that they finally got together. There's no like, you know, there's none of that, none of that uh, questioning about like which girl he's got pick or whatever. It's just like it'd be nice if they just focus on the two. On just their relationship, and in, even if yeah. any other uh, ca uh, cast, supporting cast too, like that's nice too. Just, just none of the whole like love triangle. Like if we can avoid yeah. that, that'd be great. And yeah. and I wonder <laughs> and if they if they keep that route, then I think that I me mean, that's why uh, manga readers love this show so much. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's that's why. Yeah, I think it was really good as well, like how Mia finally, you know, told Toru that him and Hori were a thing and Toru just being an absolute bro was like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we saw like how much that still hurt him when he kind of like mm -hmm. starts to tear up and he's like, oh, like I'm such an idiot. But mm -hmm. when they, you know, join after school and then Toru's kind of like, yo, are you trying to make this a thing? Like, we're good. We're bros. And they're like out in the, off in their own world while Hori is talking to the other guy. So that was nice. And like you mm -hmm. said, they're just kind of fully skirting over any drama that could be created. And it's just like, nope. This is how we're going to do it. We're focusing on Hori and Mia and keeping it really comfy, like Taylor mm -hmm. said, which I love this show for the comfiness it brings yeah. each week. I would, it's not very realistic, and I think there will be more drama with this situation in real <laughs> life, but I don't care yeah. at all. <laughs> I guess I'm the odd one out. Fine. <laughs> no, no. I, I want something as well at the end of the day. Oh, God. Some yeah. spice. Something. There's enough of that in other shows. You can go watch those. Just keep it out of this one. <laughs> hey, so. hey, it's not my fault. I just noticed these things. All right, don't be salty if next week uh, we see something happen because she didn't say I love you back. All right, I, mean, I told you. All right, it's there. Otherwise, like the only other way this usually how these rom coms go is like is they just break up during the show and then let's see what goes on there. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, I don't know. I think that's all I have for this show, though. Yeah, same. Yeah, I guess I don't have much. I'll give a shout out again to Ayush. Thanks for comments about um, Hori Mia. I guess we are, I don't know, I guess I'm the one being most harsh to Remy based on the like, anime, so maybe she is different than the manga. So, mm. yeah. So, I think it's definitely fair. Like, all we know about her so far is just that she is really kind of selfish. But I think in this episode, mm -hmm. she showed that she does have a little bit more compassion for her friends and stuff. But yeah. I think I used definitely brought up a good point, so yeah, we'll have so, to wait and see. Yeah, so I'll keep that in my when, for I, when I watch the yeah the rest of the show. So very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be it for Horror Mia, and then um, move on next to B Stars. I assume like B Stars oh, are still really good. Like, like you guys keep praising every <laughs> week. Like yeah, oh, every week good. I'm like, oh man, I need to catch up on this. So oh man, for another good week, dude. Lewis is such a smooth guy for her before man. Maybe I should be like a vegan or vegetarian, you know, because man, this guy is so smooth. Not only does he get the, uh, the stripper at the club, uh, he's got, he's got Haru and this man now has got Juno, right? Just like underneath the, the, like, Oh my God. So smooth. It's got it all. <laughs> it's got it all. I wish I was a deer. <laughs> to be fair though, Juno did, did walk away pissed from him. So does he have Juno? Well, uh, of course he does. Dude, they were dancing out in public, and then he was kind of like teasing her a little bit. She was like, "Oh man, you're not like you're not as weak as you say you are. You know, you're not just following life's rules, you know, or whatever." But it it looks like she's uh, he still has Juno's attention, and I guess for some reason she's still kind of chasing after him. I don't know if in a romantic way, but as a uh, like, like rival uh, kind of, and like 
like a or role model. He respects. Yeah, senpai like. or role model. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I have a quick question. What are sure. the what are the um, races of animals that he's picking up at the clubs? Uh, okay, so I we. Still don't, I still don't know what that one was at the club. I the think stripper. it was. A, I think it was a deer, like you mentioned. <laughs> I okay. Couldn't tell. Okay. I don't know. So, so very important. We're going to need a full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 when, when they talked about the strip club last week, I was kind of like in the back of my mind being like, what kind of animals did they choose for that? But I didn't want to bring it up. So yeah. I'm glad I, we're doing this now. I, I forgot about last week. I basically thought the exact moment. But uh, but now I thought like, okay, I'm just curious on this. On this but then if, if you guys don't know, don't worry about it. Are you looking it up, Koo? Uh, Young Okapi, whatever that means. Okay, well, that makes sense. I don't know what that is, so I wouldn't recognize her when looking at her. What, what are the other ones, then? Uh, a bunny uh, and a uh, wolf. Another wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, this this episode also introduced some conflict within the uh, within the, the, the tiger clan. Uh, looks like some of them are excited to not have to deal with Lewis anymore and not have him be their leader once they are established as... Um, like independent and strong again and they were planning on eating him but the guy who i believe actually had originally come up with the plan to make him the leader got pretty pissed off and attacked the other you know the other tigers and said you know he's not a brat like he is our leader we have to we have to tr like protect him so mm -hmm. i thought that was interesting i'm curious to see where that's going to go i've also noticed that in the end credits um lewis and that character that tiger character are like it's like them in the car the whole time. So it seems like that might be like oh, okay. an important relationship. Um, and then I, I don't know if you want to bring up what you just sent, Ku. Oh, so no, I just wanted to confirm that it says it's an Okapi, which certain is uh, uh, confirmed that it is a doe. Might as well call it a doe. I don't, I don't even know actually. Like, yeah. but it's a, it looks exactly like a deer slash doe. So. Yeah, that's that, that's what I'm saying. But the, basically, she's a herbivore. Uh, there's two herbivores and one carnivore that's currently after Lewis's D. You know what I'm saying? So this that's man, yes, yeah. this, this man is smooth. This man is very smooth. <laughs> And then, uh, okay. well, copy is actually definitely not a deer, it basically just says a forest giraffe, <laughs> a, or, zebra giraffe a zebra giraffe. Like that, yeah, so. yeah look so, at these uh, stars. And now we know, we've yeah. all learned today. <laughs> now we know, so <laughs> anyway, yep. So and then, then... In... oh, no, oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, and then additionally, in this episode, still following Lewis, we did get to see him um, have a conversation with his adoptive father, I guess you would mm -hmm. call him, the, the one who saved him from the black market. Yep. I'm still not really entirely sure on their relationship. I mean, it seems like they're cordial, at least. Uh, never mind him holding his gun in his face at the end of the conversation. I think that was really just more of a, a symbol rather than anything. But they seemed like they got along. I'm not really quite sure what the what the father's intention was with adopting Lewis or like what he wanted him to do. Ku, do you remember if that was ever said like first oh, season? Uh, he saw that he saw that Lewis had a potential when he adopted him and he wanted him yeah. to take over the business once he retires or passes away. That was, that was his intent when he adopted him. What was the business? Uh, I forget what it was, but it, okay. it, it is a pretty well known or big business. So, okay. Um, so we get to see that because basically Lewis is wanting his adoptive dad to sign his papers to let him leave school. Um, and then last but not least, we see Lugosi again, who is now a white wolf, not a gray wolf. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure if he was like, tortured like like scared to death like ken kaneki from tokyo ghoul and he just went all white <laughs> or he... no he got shaved like the reason why he got... is that really I... what happened he just got shaved yeah, he just got shaved by his panda uh sensei <laughs> i thought know? it was like from like training or working hard or being shaved i wasn't i couldn't tell so okay oh no no yeah so he, he was shaved by the the panda uh sensei for some odd reason i don't know why they they did it they never explained it but he did get shaved and apparently uh the girls like it especially juno mm -hmm. so maybe it's like when they shave your hair in in the military maybe it's supposed to throw them off or i, I don't know i uh it yeah it doesn't matter uh, sure sure fun fact they did that back in the days to prevent you from getting lice or cooties um and then let's see the last thing that i don't know if it's important but that sheep the new one to the drama club showed up at the end and seemed mm -hmm. to be highly taunting lugosi into doing something i don't really know what but he just really wants to get under lugosi's skin and mm. it's working <laughs> is that a uh, aaron yeager's voice actor yeah yeah nice. yep, yep. i was just gonna ask if he'd been introduced yet he is a, def a definite chaotic something i'm not sure what yet mm. but he is a force interesting so. 
Yeah, I nice. think he's like me. He just wants to spice things up a little bit, you know, <laughs> make it more interesting. Wants to see the world burn a little bit, right? A little bit, yeah. So another great episode. Sorry, Ku, you. What are your thoughts on this episode? Oh no, I was just gonna say the same thing. I I'm just loving the direction of the story so far. Everything is just very interesting. Uh, it's going at a good pace, and uh, the story is a lot deeper than we thought it would be. I don't know if you had any more deep expectations or if they were met with the story. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving everything so far, and I like the character development of Legosi. Uh, mm-hmm. Getting trained from a panda as to how to control his like inner instincts from uh, from eating meat, in a sense, because he is a carnivore, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess by doing so, uh, which is what I mentioned earlier, maybe being vegan it makes you super powerful, right? So by being a vegan or some sort, he's going to become even stronger and be able to perfect... Uh, prevent other uh, herbivores from getting devoured and uh, also hopefully with this training he can train uh, he can catch the guy that uh, beat him up that uh, last week's episode so yeah but yeah vegan go vegans yay yeah vegans would love this show yes (laughs) I mean if Scott Pilgrim taught me anything vegan makes you godly yes yes most definitely. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That there's lots of character development, and I wasn't sure that it would go to this level um, of 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 character arcs from like the first season. I was kind of unimpressed, like I've said from the romance angle. But I saw that there was potential for it to get better with like Lewis's decisions, and mm-hmm. I feel like they're definitely being met. So I'm very satisfied. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most definitely. It's a lot deeper than we thought it'd be. You go from season one was like, you know, your high school days. And then, like I said, with season two, it gets a lot more darker, more realistic with the real world. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really liking the direction they're going with. Um, and yeah, if you guys haven't watched yet, I, I seriously recommend this. If mm-hmm. you can get past the, the 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 animals and the CGI, but it's it's really good. I was going to say, it's mainly CGI mm-hmm. for Stratton, but. Right. I mean, I'll be I, honest. I, I actually it. kind of, I kind of look forward to the show more this week, like more than any other show pretty much each week like if, if i hadn't read attack on titan i'd probably still be more interested in that but like having read it i have to say i look forward to b stars so much every time so mm-hmm. like the b stars opening is really good but i mean just watching that opening though and seeing that cgi just reminds me i, I can't do it dude just close your eyes and listen <laughs> listen to the music bro because it definitely oh, yeah def- i'll exactly know what's going on that's all i need to do you get mm-hmm. used to it you really do i don't even think about it anymore do you Koo? no like it's so smooth compared to the other CGIs mm-hmm. out there that you you won't be bothered, I'm sure. Because mm-hmm. usually when they go CGI, they have a low budget. <laughs> well, and they're all animals, so like you already expect them to like uh, like it's like a little bit less weird to me if they. Oh, that makes sense. Me, I think. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> yeah, little bit more cartoony looking, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I think that's all I've got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. All right, so that's gonna be it for B stars. Um, we'll move on to I guess slime show for a bit. Um. I don't know how much you guys want to talk about that. But... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be very long. Okay, go for um, it. Whoever wants to start. Cool. I, I, can't. I can't. I forgot what happened. Slime show? I dropped it, remember? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so anyway, it's all uh, you, Stratton. Because I didn't um, watch this week. <laughs> do, you, do you watch it, Justin? Nope. No. Unfortunately okay. not. Um, uh, I don't know about you that. You got this, I believe. Some more town stuff happened. Um, That was just got awful to listen to and watch and i that's that's all i honestly don't remember like i can't remember i can't remember at all what happened oh, i'm just man. gonna cut slime show out this week and uh we'll call it we'll call it good, call it good? okay if that yeah uh, that's what you want then we'll cut it yeah. out short this week. I, honestly it's wow, better than me rude. just trying to sit here and like remember like what happened because like this show it, it's same thing as lock horizon like it's going so so hard on like either lore or like basically like built like building everything up in a sense when it's just it's just like what's what's the point it, it's mm. I, I don't know mm. I, I just can't stand it so moving on <laughs> can't stand <laughs> I didn't I won't say I can't stand it just like it's not on my priority just because it's more it's definitely more slice of life than yeah you know, oh no it's definitely the show that I, it's another it's another one that's added to my list of shows that I watch while I eat <laughs> uh, there's a lot of shows so. of the, the season though so it's hard to keep your attention yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I guess okay. So we'll I'll leave it in. We'll we'll keep <laughs> that, that that for slime show. I'll talk a little bit about Log Horizon then, because oh. this episode we're setting up the election. Yeah, can, we, can we just say setting up the election and moving on? Though? I know how, I know how much you all love your your civics and government class. 
<laughs> yeah, especially since we just went through this garbage like a few months ago. So yeah, so I, again, I, I I don't I guess like I don't know exactly how like they're trying to legitimize an election when basically Ains he's basically like because he's already like trying to um was it like establish his authority as the Duke of Akiba because I guess tech I guess technically since like Westland claims it as their as their land, but. So I guess this is like this is like an alternative to prevent the war because again they're trying to make Akiba into a buffer zone, and like they and they can't, really can't do much because you know like the adventures are super strong and no one wants to fuck with them. So, so this is like this is like their their way of like trying to do this without any fighting. So we got the election, basically just like this is the same thing as elections as any other show. It's like they're trying to tell you how important it is to vote and then of course people say like oh, i don't really care and then just walk away my vote my vote doesn't come exactly that's exactly, that's exactly what happened <laughs> that's like these two random ventures or they saw God, like they saw so they saw oh. the election posters and you're like man voting never really matters i never voted in real life anyways why don't i vote in mmo and then like Damn, uh, the, the tank the tank guy shows up he's like hey hey voting is your right you know if you don't vote then you can't complain what happens after that and the two guys just walked away and while he was talking and he turns around and he's like those mother he's like those yeah. motherfuckers like, <laughs> this does this stuff doesn't belong in my mmo if i if i deep dive into a game in the future and it i have to hear does. anything about politics i'm out i mean it makes sense with the, the way this oh, this, God, this but... show heavy emphasizes guilds so it, it makes sense they're just going really overboard with it yeah, they they've gone past the point of like where it was before about raiding and then like all like like trying to figure out like ways like where they are like, how to get out and all this stuff they basically avoided it they're like all right we're just gonna like try to prevent war between other players and everything it's just to be fair though yeah, for like an econ show like, or for like a like whether you're going guilds uh, focus on the guilds like, I kind of wish they focus more on economics because that's really what strives like uh, MMOs more than like politics so I wish they focused they did more economics on that. though in the first in the first season I think. Yeah, I like, guess it wasn't like heavy, yeah, it was like a lot more heavy with that. Though. I guess so. I guess maybe this is um, natural progression, but yeah, still, like... which is weird because I, I actually like first season. I still think was the best. Like the economic stuff was awesome. Like the rating, all that stuff. But the, the first Even, season like, had how like, they got the taste food. I thought that whole thing was but the first season had like well. way mm -hmm. more like game mechanics too. Like the things yeah. that, yeah. that gamers are familiar with. So the balance was done really well. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I, 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 again, I'll say here, like there is no action at all. Like so, there I, has been nothing. So I, I understand that why, like, like. If people are, are upset or they just don't feel like the season's for them because yeah there's there's no action there's no balance I mean, they I, they definitely need to bring up crusty economy like and what's going on there because there's way too much focus on like yeah. this whole this this whole election and like i would be fine if there's no action but then but focus on like the the correct and necessary parts like how like, oh, you mentioned with crusty and stuff like if it was more kind of like talking through that stuff then there wasn't politics. I mean, sure, I can easily manage. I mean, I watched Dot Hack and I thought it was fine. And there was really very little action. I, th in that I think I think the main issue too is because like because a lot of politics involves like the NPCs. Like it just it just doesn't feel like it's a, impactful because we just just thinking like why do these NPC relations matter? I mean, they, they're trying so hard to like nail down why it's important, but it still doesn't feel important to like the audience. Like it, it doesn't. It like, should be like, like a priority I, number one. I remember even the second season when they were trying when introducing the princess. Like I really just didn't care about her character. They tried so hard to give a point of view on like a NPC princess, like how she views the adventurers, but it's like it was hard to care for her because like she's she couldn't do anything. She had no powers. She was just like a political figure. So like. So, and yeah. and that's again this episode it's focused on her trying to win the election and and I guess they're saying you know like all the adventurers there's only 10,000 adventurers and there's like the NPCs have like three times as much so that's why they might lose the vote so so again and that's basically the end of the episode it's like oh hey like it's gotta get close so well, what's the results tune in next week because mm. oh just, just, just like how much y'all care about election results in real life tune in next week Rough. I am so glad I dropped this show. God so. damn. Yeah, do you think they're chanting "Stop the count"? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, um, the one the idol, the, the idol chick, whatever. She like she tried to put her name as a ballot too, and because um, yeah. the third part, the third party. Yeah, so, cause, the cause, Kanye West of the group. Yes, yeah. basically, because she was like she she saw there was like this the random there's like this point one percent like in the polls, and he's like, oh god, is there some other like shadow event? Is someone trying to you know? Commit election, is someone trying to overthrow this election? Blah blah. I think it's just the idol girl. And he's like, oh, I'm a dumbass for actually thinking this is serious. Because <laughs> basically, it's the Kanye of, of the it's, uh, of, it's, of the, mm. the the candidates. So 
It's so bad. <sighs> so, yeah, basically same I'm thing. Done. So, I'll say, like, I still enjoy the show. I, I enjoy really? the lore. Yeah. I enjoy the okay. lore. Okay. I enjoy the lore, and I'm I'm still enjoying like figuring out what's going on in like the world, but there needs to be balance. Like it's it's such little, isn't it? Like such little lore though. Like they're they're going so so hard and they put reveal a little bit like what with like a little bit. The, West, the, the key word there, dude. With like a little bit, the, the conflict between Westland and the Easter Kingdoms. Like like they're just bringing more of that lore, and now it's just like it's basically what, what I guess a lot of it's from season two. Like a lot of the tensions of season two are are finally coming or coming over here that's why like there's the threat of the war but the just... thing that sucks too is like it's not like we're gonna get nothing again next episode <laughs> it's just gonna be election the wrap results. Up of the election so, results so yeah so definitely it needs they definitely they definitely bait us with the crusty like like i don't know like crusty saga from season two yeah. because I mean, the fuck like he's shown up he's nowhere he's been nowhere at all not even like any like lines or like, any like any like scenes showing him in the new server it's just you need to do that like that's like that's like the, the i don't know the most obvious i mean obvious criticism against too much politics but also like that's the next obvious thing is like you need to show that part like for even for people like me like that's like i like like i'll say that for sure like you need to show off crusty yeah there's only been two scenes i think where it's been like memories of him from I think like the princess and I think maybe Shiroi and that's pretty much been wow. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's been uh, rough. And the thing is like we're already what halfway through the season now and we've got nothing. <laughs> I'm just assuming next episode and the prior and the episode after that is going to be nothing. So I'm going to just it's, say halfway I'm assuming, through the I'm assuming princess is just going to win the election and then might be so, there might be one one of the nobles might like try to um you know start coup start a coup. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope they don't hit you with that recap yeah, yeah. it's so. like oh hey in case you forgot <laughs> yeah now okay <laughs> yeah so so i don't know guys like i said maybe maybe the show really sucked but it came out at a really early time so we thought it was cool no and, it was actually good no i, and, I still believe uh, it was uh i don't know i don't know it was, I mean, but it's getting, uh, it's getting that balance back. <laughs> I feel like it, it could be one of those shows that, like, once the season is like fully aired and stuff, maybe you can go back and it's better than like sitting week after week through, you know, kind of mm. what David's reiterating of this this stuff. But I, I feel like it it's might just, be true. I feel like it's just I, like I, it's continuing the problem of season two where it lost the focus. I think it's just continuing. Yeah, it's I was gonna say that too. Continuing one, that part, season three. Once they introduced the princess in season two, that was definitely a part for me where I was just like kind of dropped yeah. off, and I was like, oh, I don't want to drop off, so I like powered through the rest of season two. Yeah, me. but like, <laughs> me like too. <laughs> there's so much focus on her again this season, so it's the same problem in season two. So, yep. Interesting. Anyway, which actually, actually, oh. I, I'll put, I, I should mention too because I didn't know this. I didn't know that um. That uh, the author who did Lock Horizon also did the um, was it the um, the the Ma- Demon Lord in, in Heroes sh- uh, show, the one with like uh, where the Demon Lord or that the hero like was about to kill the Demon Lord, but then she like convinces him that like sh- it's basically a show about economics, or whatever. Like, with, like with fancy, so it's, uh, it's not Devil is a part time. No, no, it's, no. It's, it's it's like it's like Mao to like Yusha. Or something. Oh. The, okay, I remember that show. Like, like that the, show the demon, is not very memorable, but I remember chick. it. I, I really enjoyed that show <laughs> yeah. because it had a lot of economics in a fantasy world. And I didn't realize it was the same author between the two. But Spice and Wolf is always my top, like, economics. I, I still need to watch that, so, but... Oh, so good. But, like, so good. but I didn't realize, like, yeah, there's, there's, two, there's two same authors. So that's so why, why, like, I, it kind of, like... I think that's, that's why I see the connections now, but... But I think this was this one, like where um, Mao and Yusha was more economic than this one. Yeah, he's definitely trying to lean more politics because of the guilds and mm. NPCs. Oh, now. Now he's just he's trying to go too big brain and he's just losing the audience at a cost yeah. for it. It's like, oh, yeah. I've done everything with economics. Let's yes. move to politics now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, can we move on? So, yes, that'll be it for Lock Horizon. <laughs> <Before we're>... Oh, man. <laughs> move on to our next show. I think it's going to be um, Kimo Jihen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to take this one, Ku? Start us off? Yeah, so this is what uh, the MC and Noblest should have been, because uh, this is the introduction of the uh, the new uh, character in the... Like detective agency yeah, group? detective agency. Uh, so 
Yeah, I forgot his name already. Was it Mihai? Yep, Mihai. Yeah, so it's Mihai the Vampire. He is the <laughs> tech guru for the group because uh, apparently Inugami has no idea how to work uh, technology. So that's where Mihai comes in. And uh, I got to say, I, I actually like the character design. I kind of like his personality. Uh, he's a fairly chill guy, and he apparently he spends his time playing video games because he's bored of the real world. So Yeah, I love like that that lore back history of how Inugami kind of convinced him to come over because he was just, you know, lived for so long as like this immortal vampire being and had gotten bored with like all the other knowledge in the world. And the one mm. thing that captivates him is Japanese online games that yeah. keeps him kind of interested. So So yeah, hits hits a little close to the heart, so that's why I like this guy. <laughs> so if only Noblesse took <laughs> took notes from this show, I guess. Um, but yeah, no. So with that being said, uh, with the introduction of him, uh, we are working on a new case where this big company was about to go bankrupt, but apparently, uh, with, in the last year or so, they've actually turned around due to some mysterious agent or whatever. And it turns out it's because of some yokais, uh, or not yokais, uh, some other, um, uh, kimono. <laughs> kimono that are a part of it. So, you know, to me, it's kind of weird, though, because if you think about it, right, uh, the guy that they sent in to kind of see, uh, kind of investigate was Shikai, is Shiki, and then he's mm-hmm. like a, a spider a kimono as well. So I'd, use, I'd assume it'd be like easy pickings for him, right? Like it's it's his strong suit to pick up flies or whatever. But apparently, for some odd reason, he, uh, when he came face to face against one of the, uh, the the three baddies that are the mos- mosquito, uh, Kimonos, he scared stiff, stiff, and he can't really do anything. So apparently, there was something that happened in the past that causes huge uh, trauma to where he can't do anything, um, and that's kind of where we're at with this. I'll just, week. I'm just gonna mention real quick. Um, so uh, in Japanese, um, usually like you have like yokai as like translated as like as like Japanese like spirits, whatever, and then kimono is more like it's always translated as beast. That's all I've always seen, and then there's also like. And then monster is more like bakemono. So I don't really know the difference between the three, but that, those are the three different words to use. So that's so. Mm. So when they say kemono, I just always hear I always see it as translated as beast. It might be something else that I'm missing mm-hmm. in translation, but there's like there's beast, oh. there's yokai, and there's like bakemono, which is monster. So there might mm. just be some overlap too. Like some people refer to different folklore that we have here in the states as well by different things. Um, and then also, like not everybody yeah. agrees on and, it. So and then also right. people, yeah. people who play. Uh, phasmophobia there's also u-ray which is like, kind of goals okay. so mm-hmm. hmm. um why did mihai send shiki there by him or himself and also why did he lock inugami in the closet i couldn't really figure out like why oh i think it was because this case might have been too difficult for them especially just for the kids and he wanted he was bored right so he wanted to yeah. see what these kids were capable of so he was testing each and every one of them to see what they're made of or like yeah like what the strong suits were it, and the fact that he saw like shiki was so like mature for someone his age it kind of pissed me high off and that's why he you know used the rc mm-hmm. car to uh get the mosquito demon's attention so that shiki would kind of be put in that hard space and then like you mm. said, that's how we then learn of like Shiki's PTSD with these like mosquitoes or insects for whatever reason, which hopefully we'll learn in the episodes right. to come. And I'm sure Inugami would have stopped them if he was able to get out of that room. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is a rough episode for me. I did not like this one very much. I was really excited when Mihai came in. I also thought that it was cool that he was somebody who had basically just taught himself everything because he wanted mm-hmm. to and he got bored. Mm-hmm. I liked that. I thought that was really cool. Um, and he was super cute. So I was like, yes, I'm on board. Join the cast. Um, but I don't know, like sending, sending Shiki there by himself and, and everything and just kind of, it's just, it's just, I just don't really like his, like, I don't get his motivations. I don't really like them. I don't, I just don't like the fact yeah. that he sent the kid up there himself. I, so I don't really like, I don't love well, the character. Um, and then like, I also had a real problem with the fact that like these mosquito kimono were like, that, that they're like solve for not getting found or, or caught was just sucking the brains out of people like that wouldn't kill them. Oh yeah, that's right. That like, was weird to me. What the I, fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's definitely something that they kind of like glossed over, but they did try to say like, oh, these beasts, you know, absorb like certain organs and stuff. But the fact, like you said, that they're taking like their brain or whatever, it's yeah. like, well, if you're just sucking their brain. Like, how are they then kind of, you know, yeah. alive still? Um, yeah, I couldn't help but think me. of uh, <laughs> the one company that used to make like iPhones and stuff. I think it was Foxconn. 
I felt like they were, that was like a direct relation to like Foxconn and just how like they would have a lot of high suicide rates. And that's kind of why oh. they touched on that piece as well as like, oh, our suicide rates are really low. And that's why business is booming. So oh, that's right. maybe yeah. that was on purpose. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I don't mm. know. Um, yeah. But no, I, I definitely felt like this was kind of just a, an average episode. I think Mihai was definitely the high of the episode as like a enjoyable new character that comes into mm. the detective agency. Um, oh, yeah. sure. The part with um, Kabane and Kon in the park. Oh, yeah, I thought that some was parts, good. I thought some parts of that where it was cute, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, that relationship kind of continuing to grow and, and Cone kind of showing her affection for Kabane, whereas before all she wanted to do was cut his head off and deliver it to Inari, you know, mm -hmm. her her master. Um, and then, you know, we got the, the little sneak peek of the replacement um, Kitsune, the uh, blonde haired kid mm -hmm. with the headphones. So now mm -hmm. we kind of have, I think, all of the characters that are shown in the uh, the opening song or the mm -hmm. opening animation. So be interesting to see where that goes but yeah definitely feel like it was kind of just like a eh, episode did some things all right but i don't know i think it's still holding the bar above average for shows this season so yeah i'll definitely still mm -hmm. keep up with it like i'm nowhere near dropping it right mm -hmm. I, I was telling certain earlier today i was like i just feel like this show has such good potential and it just keeps falling just a little bit short and that's why i'm so frustrated with it i know it could do better things <laughs> yeah I, I think it was ku said last week how he you know or ku like you said like you know akira was kind of a character archetype that you you know didn't really like to see in shows and i think again this mm -hmm. episode we saw where you know when shiki's kind of like wondering for where backup is like kabane is ready to go but then akira is just completely passed out of the fear again so useless. Fucking useless, uh, yeah i was just like god you. damn it and the fact that they just jumped away from from you know her her twin brother and stuff and it's just like okay i know that's stuff to come not but a her it's a he it's a he, he. Yeah, yeah yeah sorry yeah. sorry sorry <laughs> um but yeah now it's just kind of more like damn it coo like you were right they're just yeah. gonna be useless like god yep. damn it <laughs> that's right last episode when they're needed the most that's when they'll shine, right yep. so um but yeah i don't know it's just one of those things where it's like I feel like it's the characters that makes you want to come back, right? You you got Mihai Definitely. now. I got Shiki. I guess if you're into Kabane, that's a thing. If for some reason you're into Akira, something's wrong with you. Um, <laughs> and then like with, with Colin coming back into the picture too, there's that little chemistry that they got going on with Kabane. So uh, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. the, the characters is is pulling you along. Uh, but the story do, is kind of um, lackluster. Do you think we're gonna get to see Kabane with red hair next episode? Uh, Does he actually have red hair, or is that like just an artistic discretion from the opening? That that I don't know. Okay. I'm just trying to go from memory, but I feel like we're getting closer to the point where, it even though he is like super OP, like I feel like he has to get to that point. Because even in this episode, they hinted at it when um, Mihai and everybody had the arm wrestling, and Kabane was kind of like, "Oh, I wonder if I use my awakening power, like I'd be able to beat him." Right. And that was another kind of gripe that I didn't like of how like. Kabane just fought with Colin in the park, and then that was all he needed to go back and then beat Mihai. Well, he hasn't, know, done it, like, he hasn't done it yet, right? So, well, but didn't they they say like the reason Mihai needed them to like do stuff was because like his wrist was broken now because Kabane beat him in arm well, wrestling. I, I don't know he if that didn't... was reference to the original arm wrestling match they had, or like afterwards. Yeah, that, back that's in the where I was. Again. Yeah, so, but that... I don't. I yeah. thought that he acted like he won, but really his wrist had been broken. Uh, yeah, it could be. I need to go back and, and watch that because that was a part that like didn't really like link up for me. Like I know he yeah. beat everybody the first time they were like mm -hmm. facing off against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then like once he went back and then he came out to Inagami, he was like, oh, yeah, they broke my wrist. It was kind of like, huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, for sure, I think next week or the weekend after we'll 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 see for sure if he transforms or not. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's it for me. Yeah, same. All right, so when it there for uh, Kimo Jihan, uh, move on next to I'm a spider. So what? Oh, uh, you know, how you, how you feeling about this week's episode, Justin? Honestly, funnily enough, I'm back in. Yeah. You know, I know last week I was kind of you know talking with you and saying like, oh, this episode was really boring. It didn't do anything for me. Uh -huh. Um. I think what really brought me back in this week was the the good dynamic between uh, Kumiko Spider side and we you know human side with uh, Shun and and Ray and Ray's kind of evolution as a dragon and her kind of leveling up now and then the uh, crazy like uh, religious girl the green eyed chick who's trying to get <laughs> Shun to believe in in the good word of the Lord for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, 
So, so I really like that. And then I think what I liked as well this week was the fact with Kumiko, even though it focused a lot more on like her stat progression again, we got to learn a little bit about the larger picture where I think it was like the W percent or like N percent I equals W, something to do with like some unknown ability that has like a much larger impact on like what you as a character can do in that world. So that kind of interested me this week. Um, and then at the very end, we get to see uh, Julius, Shun's brother, who's like this like well-regarded like warrior, um, almost like the warrior of light in like a Final Fantasy sense. And he's kind of now going into the cave that Kumiko, or that we know Kumiko is currently mm -hmm. like navigating around. So yeah, I, I'm back in. <laughs> So I mean I am I am a little disappointed though because I feel like she's gonna be stuck in a cave for just a little bit longer, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, now that we're starting to see like the immersion of both worlds in a sense, uh, hopefully it picks up a lot more. And then, like I said, or like you mentioned, with Kumiko having these these special abilities that we don't know how it's gonna work per se, but mm -hmm. definitely it has some crazy multipliers uh, like correlating to her stats. So she's definitely gonna get a lot stronger. And uh, in this episode, we saw that she was able to defeat this giant, crazy catfish lava monster. Yeah, the flame catfish. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is, the thing that bothered me the most was the fact that it looks like she's going to be stuck in a cave just a little bit longer. I really wish she yeah. would have gotten off by now. Uh, but again, since they actually did show uh, the other side as to what they're doing in the human world, uh, it, it does draw you back in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, hopefully, I think I want to say this either this next episode or the episode after. Will make you either like the show or hate the show. I, I definitely, feel. definitely. I think the other piece that I liked was um, the crazy religious girl's fixation on like the taboo skill. And like uh, we learned in this episode that Kumiko, as she leveled up, like one gained the taboo or gained like multiple levels up in mm -hmm. the taboo skill. And then also uh, Ray, the dragon, or Faye, I think her name's Faye. Mm -hmm. um, the dragon character, she also was like looked really concerned when the religious girl was talking to you and is like, "Hey, if you see anybody who has the taboo skill, like we gotta kill them, like ASAP." And Faye was mm -hmm. kind of like, "Oh shit!" Like, so she probably has that skill as well, and in, in some variant. Um, but I think the real big reveal that I'm looking forward to is what you said. You know, from I think way back in either episode one or two, Ku, where you had the theory that these focuses of the human group and Kumiko's group may be taking place at different periods in time. Right. Yeah. So See? I'm really thinking that something, <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're on there again. So the profit title is, is well, mm. well placed upon thee. So yeah. um, I'm interested to see if Julius and Kumiko like interact in some weird way. And that kind of like, you know, evolves into something further. But oh, it yeah. could even be Julius is there at a different time as well. There might be three different timelines. Right. This could be Julius in the past before he became a great hero, right? Like with yep. the help of Kumiko, he was able to become stronger and overcome whatever, uh, like, I don't, I don't, because I forget what made him, like what he did or accomplished that yeah, made him same. acquire the hero title, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, most definitely. But yeah, I feel like once they like merged two worlds together, it should be really interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, who who knows? It's uh, it's kind of just up in the air right now. Definitely, definitely. So, like you said, hopefully this next episode, fingers crossed, we get out of the damn cave, or we at least mm -hmm. have some big tie together. Right. Um, because that will be like the the big breaking point. Because I think we'll be at what episode six? So like half. Is it yeah, only half. a twelve episode season for? Uh, matter, I actually don't remember. It says can... twenty four on anime list. Oh, okay. Then we got yeah. plenty so, of time. But... Plenty of time, but but still, so, yeah, you don't want to drag the heels. Over. Yeah. Right, right. Because, like I totally. said, ultimate go, sexy spider lady. That's <laughs> what I'm looking for. So, well, we'll, we'll these are a lot in the opening. So, right, right. Hopefully, we get there soon. I'm with you. I'm yeah. just gonna say it's just gonna be the little spider. It's just gonna be randomly OP. You shut your mouth, David. That's my. <laughs> Don't prediction. take this away from this me. This will be my <laughs> prediction. Don't fall into the usual isekai tropes, please. Yeah, <laughs> no. please not. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that's all I got yeah, for this week. That's all I got as well. So okay, so that'll be it for I'm a spider, and then move on to Wonder Egg Priority. Yeah, Wonder Egg Priority still looks nice, but then it's still kind of going through. Um, I, I completely forgot this was actually like the, I think the first episode where it was like a two parter almost. Um, for where mm -hmm. it, they were still oh, like yeah. in the same world yeah. as the prior one. Yeah, completely forgot yeah. about it. Um, this one, this one was actually th this one I thought was better. Mainly because they went more into like kind of like the backstories of some of the characters, um, 
I feel like well, that was a weird way to introduce a new character, though. Momoi? I thought it was okay. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I thought it was okay. It, it, it kind of fits the theme of what we've been seeing, where they, mm-hmm. where we just all of a sudden get, in, they get thrown into, like, a random battle with one of, the, like, the new kind of, like, main characters. Mm-hmm. And they basically just beat whatever, and then they just run into that park with, like, those dummy-looking people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, or or yeah. the mannequins? Uh, I mm-hmm. think mannequins. Aliens. Mannequins works better. Aliens. Yeah. Yes. yes. Aliens. Uh, so it's uh, except I, did anybody think like she like right away that she was a that she was a dude? I think I think I've watched. No, I'll, 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 yeah, no. I'm pretty sure she was a girl. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure pretty knew right away. Um, I was kind of just a more of a curious question because I'm not as familiar with like Japanese culture and stuff. But it's like same sex relationships not as like common at all over there. I mean, if they are, they're uh, not really mentioned. Uh, yeah, because because I just didn't know if that adds to like a lot of the like rationale to why Momoe like felt she had to like a, you know appear as a male. Mm-hmm. Like I know they kind of gave her the background of like oh, she right. obviously yeah. had like a school friend mm-hmm. who's also female that you know loved her, um, and that Momoe was trying to I guess like be a the man in the relationship, and that's kind of why she like you know comes across as like dressing as a man and wanting to others to think of her as a man versus a female. Mm-hmm. Um, were you gonna say something? I was gonna say the only thing I know is that like gay marriage still isn't legal in Japan, so that's pretty okay. much okay. Yeah, yeah. So that could and, be a big reason of why then, with that, like throws a big wrench into that relationship of them as two girls in high school. Right, yeah. and I'm pretty sure that's why they, uh, her friend or lover or whatever, committed suicide mm-hmm. because you know they obviously were into each other, but it, once it was brought onto light, it. Didn't end yeah, up. didn't didn't went well. So, so that's probably what occurred. I, I also like how that um like the other main character girls like they basically thought she was a dude except the ma- the MC were uh, mm-hmm. just immediately. <laughs> just yeah, immediately like, yeah, she's like, how do you look? And she's like, you look like a pretty girl. And she's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so I, I I definitely came in clutch with her iconic sunflower hoodie mm-hmm. that, yes. uh, that they touched upon. So that's another thing that I've actually been reading about is there's a lot of like symbolism I guess with like flowers from like earlier episodes and other things of just like they'll drop it in kind of subtly from an animation standpoint yeah right. i'll have to start like I'm, I'm starting to notice these things a lot more now with just like the symbolism like it mm-hmm. still looks like, it still looks so nice oh it's so so pretty um, yeah but with this episode though it, it kind of broke away from like what the whole where i think most of these shows where it's like the first couple where it just seems like it's gonna be routine a routine battle in another world with just where it seems like random and then mm-hmm. just kind of like moves on to the next one, but this one we actually got some more of like backstory of the uh, of the characters. They also, I thought it was also an interesting way of int- you know like uh, introducing another character. I'm a, which at this point it's got to be what like the last like one of the last like main characters of the crew. Can there be any more than four? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, according to the thumbnail, I think that's that's it. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say the, the promo art just shows the four okay. of them like laying yeah. in the field where they get the eggs from. So. Okay. Right. Yeah, most definitely. I think, I think we're good there. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I'm I'm hoping that now that we do have that main ensemble of cast and we have, you know, at least a general idea of what is each of the reasons that they're kind of brought into this egg hunt of bringing mm-hmm. back, you know, somebody mm-hmm. that they've either loved or wronged or whatever it may be. Um, I'm just really hoping and, and waiting for and maybe I'm being just too ambitious of I'm really hoping for like a, a Madoka esque like twist of something where it's just going to get really dark really soon for one of these characters uh it might though because the new chick momoi her last name Mm -hmm. is the same as the the teacher that keeps coming over oh really okay that's who i didn't pick up on that yeah Yeah. because that's why i was familiar you know Uh, because when they said the name i'm like i have no idea who that is i was like maybe it'll come up with the future yeah i I just lost over it honestly i'm glad who was paying attention there that makes a lot more theories come it's like i don't hate the show uh i mean i i I guess still but like the show i don't think it's really good but i also don't think it's really bad but i'm not gonna put like yeah that much I'm more kinda, into i'm whatever world. like the the monsters of the world that you know they're always fighting against those yeah. like i mean not to give them discredit like i think they do show like good examples of why people may be driven to commit suicide or other things but like yeah. you said it's not it's no longer like a main draw for me it's now like okay i want more in these four main characters and i want there to be some bigger twist at play to mm-hmm. one what they're trying to accomplish and then two these like mannequin figures like 
they're definitely up to some sketchy bullshit that they're not, you know, <laughs> they're doing some messed up at the end of the day. Like, yeah, I mean, a... oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was just saying that the, it, it always seems like those, like the people like in the background and the like, kind of like are running it. There's always something sketch with them. Like it's never, they're just they're It's like, it's never good intentions or they're just doing it for like the goodwill of whatever. It's always like they have their own kind of plan of what's going on and yeah. eventually be like the ultimate boss. Mm hmm. It almost seems like in all the interactions that we've gotten with the mannequins, they're always very like blunt and like they don't really have much empathy yeah. for any of the reasons. They're just like, yep, you guys think this way or, you know, humans have this type of like emotional capacities and that's why you do these things. Yeah, because they've, so. they've never actually said that like uh, like what they're wanting, like what they're trying to do will actually work. Have they? I don't think so. They've just kind of given them the nugget of like, oh, the more of these eggs and people that you, you know, solve their their past traumas, the better the, chance, the better chance of, you know, your person coming back to life or something mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like even further, like even if that person comes back, like I feel like there's going to be some like type of ramification as well. Like, you know, you're striving to bring back this person that you have like these fond feelings or memories for. And I feel like there's just going to be even maybe something darker at play there right. in some way. Well, I mean, if you want to bring IRL like aspects into the show, um, mm -hmm. if they've been dead for a while, I don't see how they're just going to miraculously come <laughs> back, right? I mean, granted, they are doing some kind of like supernatural shit by going. <laughs> they're frozen in whatever material Han Solo was frozen in from Star Wars. It's good, you know. <laughs> the Japanese thought ahead of time. Is that sure? Right? Yeah, but, um, they got that technology on lock. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, sure something crazy is about to happen once they finally do revive them in a sense. Mm -hmm. I know. Did somebody like have kind of like uh, the thought that the 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 main cast is actually dead? Are we pretty much past that? I don't think any of them are actually dead. So I was uh, just thinking while we were going through these theories that like, what if they are all dead and there's some sort of like experimental medical treatment being done on them that connects them? Or this somehow, is like mentally? some type of like purgatory, like in yeah, between. or that. Mm -hmm. oh God, yeah. we're getting into so many different things. Yo, man, they can they can get oh, super man. deep. I mean, I'd be I'd be okay with that. That's, like I said, that's what wait, I want. Wait, I'm looking on. for that mo mo Madoka esque twist. <laughs> Oh, you just want this dark stuff, and then yeah. like, minds just go immediately to that. <laughs> I want to see if M Night Shyamalan is working at Cloverworks. I get let him me, out let, here. Me, I... let me check. <laughs> they were dead all along. Okay, that makes sense. Good. I'm not Shyamalan so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Majority of his movies yeah. are just terrible. After uh, Signs, I was like, nope. It, like, Justin, what? one of these days you should ask Sasha like to give his thoughts on the. Uh, I think it was called like the happening. Where it was basically just like a bunch oh, of guys I, I saw I saw the happening. I saw okay. the happening. Yeah. 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 I think that was the last one I saw. Because then yeah. once you did like Lady in the Water and like the the one that had to do with like the devil in the elevator or whatever, I was like, Yeah, you, you, no. Yeah, so basically Sasha. I think he has a new movie too. And it's like, oh no. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Who who keeps <laughs> funding fun. this man? This needs to stop. <laughs> he's, still, yeah, he's just he's just taking out his own money. He's like selling his things. That's why we don't yeah. know anything about him. He lives in the <laughs> right. <laughs> uh but to be honest with you, if, if that was the case, if they're already dead or something like that, um uh, that would so that would really ruin the show for me, to be honest. I hate when that I hate that twist, like in so many different things where like where it's like, oh, they've been done. You feel all like, like none of it, none of it matters in that yeah. sense. Then, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just I can't think of like off the top of my head, but I, I definitely like I just I remember like going through things where you just find out that the person was actually always dead, and it's just like so, fucking seriously, really. I think it could be well done. I mean, like, sorry for anybody who hasn't seen it. I guess it could be spoilers. But Are you gonna talk about Lost? <laughs> no, I was gonna oh. talk about another anime, one that David really okay. liked. Uh, Angel Beats. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah. Like that's early, early that in the yeah. show, so it's not really a spoiler. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was well done. It was still bittersweet and everything, and sad, but like it was. From what I remember, I, I didn't like the show that much, but it was about them basically like finding peace with moving on, right? Yeah. And maybe that's something that they could do with this one. I think that yeah. that would be satisfying. Okay. Mm, I'd we'll have to wait and see. Because we still don't know what the symbolism is behind eggs, like like why it's an egg, why oh, all these point. why all these uh, girls or whatever that did commit suicide are stuck in an egg. Yeah, uh, so. I don't know if it's like some rebirth or I don't know. Right, you can't think of much further symbolism with an egg. Well, the positive on the about this show though, it's it's an original, right? Anime original. Yeah. So we'll get a resolution. Nice. <laughs> Maybe. 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 What do you mean? Maybe. There's no other. There's no other. Uh, um, what if they're so confident? gonna get more and they're just like all right 
I mean, season I two, think, baby. Let's I, mean, go. I was just gonna think they were gonna wrap it up in a, you know in twelve episodes. I, usually, I'm, I'm sure they will. I don't or, see how you can really play. bring much into it, like yeah. at the end of the day. So, yeah. mm. but I'm good. But I, they do I be looking them. pretty though. So keep it oh, up, Clover yes. works. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's trending upwards. So David, get on Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I'm already having trouble keeping up with this season, man. You have to ask me later. Yeah, just do when you eat or something. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, don't do it because there's actually a lot of things you got to pay attention to, and symbolism. Symbolism. There's but, a lot of small things in shows that you got to yeah. pick up on, for sure. Anyway, yeah, I'm I'm gonna see this this anime through definitely. <laughs> yep. Good. Good. All right. So we're it there for one day. Give up shout outs to any other shows. We'll wrap it up. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um. We also forgot to mention. Uh, sorry, uh, Justin. That uh, no, no Black, worries. Black Clover. Black Clover was announced. It's going to be ending. Oh I yeah, I saw that. I that. So <laughs> is that confirmed? Is that happening because they're catching up to the source material too quickly, or because isn't? I also read like a theory that because Bleach is coming back in April, that that was potentially another like reason. Bleach is coming back in there. April. They've announced it like by now. It's yeah. So I don't think. I don't think. It's I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what exactly. Or do they just feel like because Black Clover's been like constantly airing season after season for a while now, right? Like, are they yeah, maybe trying to make it like? Manga. Yeah, they caught it. Yeah, okay. It's, I mean, you know, it's gonna come back though, Strand. So I don't know why you sound like it's like. Yeah, I, I, that's fine, man. I think if I think if anything, it'd be better if they just do it like a once a uh, like you know season type of thing, and then just give like the animation team a rest rather than just like pumping it out. Isn't it throughout period? the entire year doing Black Clover? Yes. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Some, so yeah, that they, don't, they don't know that's the meaning of taking a break every season. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. It's it's like it says like it's supposed to be like the final episode, but at the same time, like this just seems like yeah, it would be a like, really weird spot to end it because like what's that, going it's on that, in the it's a comeback as Black Over Part Two then whenever <laughs> they have fine. enough that's material. Just, so. just give it a break uh, for yeah. me. Maybe I'll be done with anime at that point. When it comes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, have to worry about it. I don't oh, have to boy. feel like inclined to watch it, but I'm only watching the uh, I'm only watching the canon episodes anyway. I'm not watching filler. I, I hate Black Clover's yeah. comedy. It's awful. <laughs> it's I've I've never last la- like I don't think I've ever laughed at any point in this show. Mainly because I can't stand Asta. It, 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 it <laughs> Bro, just... why do you, why do you even watch this show? If it Dude, because you such I agony. got so far <laughs> into this show, I'm like I'm going to see the end. Like I remember that... I... Shren, Shren I... here. Shren here does not know the concept of a sunk cost fallacy. That's why. Dude, like no. I remember at the beginning of the show, like I was thought one, I was like so hyped because I was like, damn, this show looks awesome. Shren... Also, like I think the hold on, hold on, like the voice of Asta. I thought like, damn, okay, new voice actor. This is gonna be awesome. And then episode three, I was like, all right, dude. I'm He's just yelling. <laughs> dude, I yeah. actually, I dropped yeah. the show because of his voice actor. And I was like, I'm just going to go read the oh, manga. Yeah. And dude, that's I what remember, I did. Yeah. I remember a lot of people, like, they were saying, like, the manga readers were, like, really hyped for this. They're like, dude, I, f- I can't stand this guy. Like, it's, it's basically, like, everybody hates, like, like I guess, like, how Asta is in this show. And every time, dude, like, I just remember feeling just, I would just feel exhausted. Like, I just went, like, on, like, a, like, a, like, a, like, a, was it, like, a five-mile jog or something. I just went home I, after like watching the episode. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna take a nap." <laughs> like his voice uh, was so loud, it was like it was like hitting me. It was uh, <laughs> I just was like, "I gotta go to bed." It was I brutal. I don't know why you're still watching this series. Right? Yeah. The, the stereotypical <laughs> guy in those textbooks when they say, <laughs> "Oh, like if you bought a movie a t- movie ticket, that's bad." You still. He, he, he wants to watch the whole thing because he spent money on it instead of walking out and using his time to do other stuff. He's the stereotypical of guy. In the middle of the I've, only ever, I've only ever walked out of one movie. Thread's <laughs> Thread, the guy that would eat something and be like, ew, but then he'll keep eating it. Because like, he paid money for <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's money. I, yeah. I, I, okay. Hey, I, I respect that. <laughs> yeah. I and that. He'll, start, he'll start licking his lips and like, my fingers like, oh, why not? <laughs> Why Paid that? for the damn meal. I'm gonna eat the damn Some meal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it. That is very accurate, Koo. I, I, I'm, I know that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, I'm, I'm very a big fan. Like, if I have a drink and I'm drinking, I'm, and I'm not like, oh my god, I will continue to finish that drink. Oh my god. No, but this is in direct comparison. Like, instead of just eating one thing, right? This is like you're at a buffet and you're constantly eating the thing that you hate for some reason, and because it's there and it's all you can eat, you're just going, you're just constantly going at it, even though you hate it. So like we're at oh, yeah. we're we're at episode one hundred and sixty three, and this man still does not like it, but he's still watching it. But for guy, some reason. But I, I made it to the point where it's ending. Eight episodes. When I saw that, I felt like it was like a holy light that just like hit me, and it's like it's like this is 
This is what you've been going for. You've reached the end. I, uh, I, I don't know if this justifies it, but I mean, if it works uh, for you, sir, yeah, God, Godspeed. But, yes, uh, it's it's I'm, it's almost there. I could I could just I feel all it. Right. Does anyone have oh. anything else besides Black Clover they want? Sorry, shot that was to? a crazy. No, that was really rant. funny. I'm glad I, I saw oh. I heard. Yeah, that. that was a good good divergence. Um. <laughs> Not really. Skate. Skate is continuing to be skate this season. I saw it got a manga adaptation awesome announced, too. which kind of surprising. But I guess a bunch of people must be, you know, digging Actually, it. It's not that surprising. Hey, a lot, a lot. manga of skateboarding. Like, that's so weird. Bunch of hot dudes. Uh, I'll say, like, a lot of anime <laughs> adults usually get manga adaptations, so I'm not surprised. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I mean, it's still, it's still pretty. So again, again, dude, like the villain. I, I, I and again, I can't stand this guy. It's just so dumb. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> so an dumb. absurd, over the top villain. But I'm okay with it now because I've accepted that in my mind of what <laughs> he is. So <laughs> I just love it for the over the top. God, what, what is he? He's supposed to be like one of those like uh like uh oh my god. I, I feel he's like one of those like bull the bull. He's dude. a mat matador. The matador. And he's yeah. just ridiculous. He's absolutely ridiculous. Wait, he's an over the top the, pretty boy a entrepreneur matador. matador. In a skateboarding yeah. anime. Yep. He's sitting there like basically dancing he's on like... a skateboard and just basically skating <laughs> like a god. It's just like he's like okay. a mix of <laughs> Batman, a matador, uh Phantom of the Opera with a mask <laughs> that he's got going on and insulting oh. the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, I know, but uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of many other mask characters to talk about. <laughs> so oh, forgive man. me, uh, any Phantom of the Opera fans. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, um, but other again, than, it's, I'm going to finish Skate 2. <laughs> other than that, the only other thing on the horizon that I'm looking forward to is uh, Wit Studios' new project where oh, they're working with the that. author of ReZero. And I think oh, they just released a new a new okay. uh, PV. I, okay, yeah. I, I knew they were working on a new project. I didn't realize it was the ReZero guy. I, I thought, yeah. I feel like I've, I've heard I've seen this before. I just forgot about it. So, yeah. But then again, so. the ReZero author, he did, he did the Warlords like last season it wasn't that good so yeah i was gonna say i'm not gonna mm, get too okay much about i didn't know i didn't know he had done other stuff before so. yeah, other than re-zero there was i remember there's one thing i was like i got a bunch of people were hyped for i think it was, was it the creator of fate zero that was gonna do like that chaos dragon and it bombed epically oh, was, that, Gen, was that the one Urbochi, yeah yeah i remember thinking like damn this is gonna be so good and i think that was my most hated show nope. i've ever watched in my life and i dropped it after two episodes <laughs> and i think i gave it a one maybe a two I should probably go back and you give say it a Fate one. Zero. He's mainly mainly known for no. like for go, uh, Monopod wasn't it a... and, and Psycho Pass. That's the thing. I don't remember. I, remember, I just or remember Bucky, something. It was it was Gargantia, right? Was the no, show no, no, that not not Gargantia. That's there was something else. I thought would... Gargantia was really bad. Oh, <laughs> I was really hyped. I, okay. I was hyped for it. I I, I enjoyed Gargantia, but there's this other show you worked on that was really bad. Okay. It's like yeah, it was like Chaos Dragon or something. Ooh. I know what Strand's talking about. Yeah, it was terrible. Like, Awful. Gagashi was, was watchable. That's the thing. This other yeah, show was true. not. It was not. Yeah, I remember so. Chaos Dragon. Like, the, I think it was around the time where they were really, they were trying to, like, hype it up with a bunch of posters and everything. I think that was the time I was, like, in Japan. That, that fucking poster was everywhere. <laughs> like, like, I just okay. kept thinking, like, damn, yeah. these people must feel stupid. Because <laughs> it was just awful. Got it. And now he's just gone into hiding ever since. I've not heard from the Butcher. I, I have as not they heard used from him. Well, well, yeah, I don't even know <laughs> how much he did in Cycle Pass. So... Yeah. After the first season, so this part has been awesome, guys. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. Yeah. If oh, uh, Nanan Biori still being like Nanan Biori Euro Camp still awesome. Oh, it's still basically it's just so calming, soothing, everything. Uh, everything you would need to basically like if you need, if you have trouble sleeping, watch it. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see what okay, what else. Oh yeah, Digimon's still awful too. Um, Again, why are you? Oh uh, yeah, this? I gave I gave up on that after <laughs> Trent, like episode why, three why? when it took that break and restarted. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Trent, why okay, are you still watching so, this, man? Okay, but I should I should clarify. I'm I have it running. It's basically I eat, but when I finish you eating, have so many shows I go to my oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> how, but I go how to my other eat, monitor. Like four I, four I, monitors. But, each monitor's got a okay, different show on while okay, he's eating. He's like, I oh, have, okay. All these shows come out on different days. Okay, I've got to eat different days. Okay, I can't say like you're watching so many shows while you eat, man. No, because with Digimon, this is the one show though that I will I'm, I'll, like while I'm eating, I'll watch it. But then I go to my other monitor and I just surf stuff, or I, I basically go through things Fair. like email, whatever. And then I'll, I'll look over when there's like a different Digimon transformation, that, that's, or, that's, that's the only cool part that's of the show. What I do with a slime show, basically. Yeah. Again, again, there's so many like like political like government stuff in Dig when was this in the original? Like no. they basically will just say like, no. oh, like so. Cur did, cur original, right original now, Digimon like, was all about the isekai and going on the adventure. Okay. 
Because right now, the current in the this current reboot of Digimon, the space station is falling from Earth and and going towards Japan. Oh yeah, because you know before that, you that in the in the beginning they had like the missile, the missile like that was being from, launched. From, I was yeah. like, what is this yeah. from the U.S. Yeah, government? Now. Yes. Yep. Now the they made Izzy is like way more OP in terms of his like hacker abilities well, because like, like oh, yeah, there's, 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 there's way more computers, computers nowadays than back in like '99, <laughs> so he has to do more yeah. things. Yeah, this guy's like an absolute god, and he's like five. <laughs> Easy. God damn it. Yeah. Taking the things we knew and love and just <laughs> <laughs> making them never, for those damn Zoomers. <laughs> I never watched the original, but I mean, if, I, if I was a kid, if, if I was a kid, I think I would be, I would, I would be enjoying this show. Okay. It, it's just True. Digimon. It's just constant fights over and over it's again. It's okay. There's very little dialogue. Sasha's daughter will get to enjoy all that. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. She she better she's not only the best man, you know. We're, we're I don't know. Every single anime. <laughs> Any anime total after like 2010, she can't watch. <laughs> nah, I shouldn't nope. say that. <laughs> we're going back to Shinchan 1987. Oh, God. <laughs> What's out the VCR for that? Hell yeah. Uh, VCR, boy. All right, so. Right, that's gonna be the end of the podcast. So, I want to thank the audience for being with us this week. Thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun, a lot of chat we had. Yeah. So, a lot of fun discussing yeah. with you guys. Yeah, thanks, Johan. Thanks, Tizzle. Thank you, Kate Kuhn, as well. And also, a shout out again to our uh, our top or was our top our comment comments, on our yeah. normal shout uh, out to the comments who enjoy reading your comments. So, yes. So, keep, keep, keep at uh, them. We'd love to hear what you think or even just what shows you're watching. Yes. Yeah. Even if you hate us, give us helpful criticism. <laughs> Let us know what we missed because, you know, yeah. we try to capture everything, but yeah. inevitably yeah. we might miss something. Yeah. Oh, and then I want to thank the panel. We need dollar doing... checks. Send them. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I want, want to thank the panel for joining me this week. Thanks, guys. I feel like this is, there's no a, lot of, a lot of hype things happening You're this welcome. week. A lot of the shows. Aww. So yeah. it's fun talking to you guys. Of yeah. course. Always. A lot of hard work, but yep. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do it without you, man. Yeah. So we'll see you hey, next week. You know, Bye. First did, last time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.